Enoch stands in the Bible and says, hello, this realm really does exist. Abraham stands in the Bible and says, come on in. There's a place to sit down with him and eat and dine under the shadow of a tree. Moses declares with the bright shining of God's lethal light upon his face. With the rushing mighty wind of the Spirit overwhelming him. This is the only place to be. Elijah declares to you and me, come on in. There is a place of being separated in another realm. That which belongs to God alone, where Satan has no access, where demon spirits don't even exist. Uh, a place where the power and the authority of the living God is seen upon a, the face of the dreadful crew of the people. Those born in due time, those born by the Spirit of the Lord, brought forth by the power and the authority of His Word, the outcast of men. Hallelujah. But the declaration of the power and the very life of the living God. Hallelujah. It's true. Jesus comes and says, I'm the door in. No man can come into this realm. No man can come to the Father except by me. He says, come on in. He says, come into a place of communion. Come in a place of separation, being alone with me. So I can teach you. How to arise with healing in your wings. Come here into this place where the Holy Ghost will show you how to speak. Not after the realms of human reasoning and human understanding. But by the very word and mind of the living God. To declare those things which he has spoken and that which he has in his heart to say. God's calling you. He's drawing us. He's saying, come on in. Too many people are fascinated by what Satan has designed within the realms of the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life. But Father says, I have a realm such full of so far greater pleasures. I have a realm filled with that which lasts forever. There's no diminishing of this life and of this glory. Father says, come on in, be separated unto me. Let me show you how. Because these are the days of these works and greater works than these. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And tonight, we're just here standing in the presence of the Lord, worshiping Him, so that we may begin to enjoy this communion and fellowship in the Spirit that much deeper, that much richer tomorrow morning. Tonight, Father, does not purpose that any single person leave here with anything less than a greater encounter with His presence than you've had up to this point. Greater. God looks at Job and says to Job, this is my servant. He's perfect. He's tamim. The Hebrew word tamim is perfect. And he's righteous. My perfect servant. My righteous servant, Job. So he must have had, some, he must have had it going on. He must have had it really going on. Possibly one of the descendants of Abraham through Keturah. He had it going on. Yeah? But he has another encounter with God. Check, fix the microphone so it doesn't just wig out on us. Has another encounter with God and that, in the, that next encounter with God, he abhors himself. He says, once and I have spoken, yea, twice. There comes kind of a place, a time and a point in your life where you abhor your own opinion, your own advice, and the sound of your own voice. Because you begin to recognize Father wants to speak through you. Yeah. He wants to give you wisdom and insight. He wants to cause you to understand how it all happened when He laid the foundation of the earth, when He called forth the stars in the womb of the morning. Ah, Sake Tapaya. Hallelujah. Ah. 
He says, my comeliness, all that I thought that was great about me and beautiful and wonderful about me has turned into corruption. I had an encounter. Isaiah, what a prophet. Manasseh took him and sawed him right down the middle. Manasseh taught Israel how to sin. Manasseh did more wickedness than any king, even greater king. Manasseh did more wickedness in the southern kingdom than Ahab did in the northern kingdom. Ahab with Jezebel, who took Baal and play, replaced him for Yahweh. Replaced Baal for Yahweh. And said, this is the Lord. This is the living God. And gave him his prostitute, Asherah. And built shrines and temples for him on every high place. And even set up his altar in the holies of holies. Manasseh. God said, I will never repent or turn back from my judgment against Judah and Jerusalem because of the son of Manasseh. He took Isaiah and sawed him in two. Because Isaiah was so radical, eh? Whew. What a prophet. What a radical prophet of God. Boy, does he prophesy chapter 1, chapter 2, chapter 3, and chapter 4, and chapter 5. But he has an encounter. He has an encounter. He is able to show Israel their sins, Judah their sins, and Israel their iniquities. He's able to declare the counsel of God and make known Father's judgments. But now he has another encounter. He says, I'm undone. I'm undone. I'm undone. I dwell in the midst of the people who contaminated me. I'm unclean before you. My lips are unclean before you. Fix this mic, if you would, please. Stand in front of the mic. I'm unclean before you. The encounter. Father's always got provision for the encounter. He had provision for Job. The encounter, when he, when he was calling him deeper and deeper and deeper still. Some people get distracted because they want this thing and that thing and the other thing that belongs to the cares of this life and the deceitfulness of riches and the pleasures of this world and even the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and the pride of life. And the only reason you want that is because you're not filled up with all that he's got for you. But Father's here to perfect the people who know how to walk with him or so filled with him there's no room for anything else. Satan comes along with all of his garbage, demon spirits with all their deception and you just don't have no room. You have no room. I'm good. I'm filled up. I'm not thirsty no more. Ah, I'm filled up. I'm filled and I'm continually being filled. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Jesus. God says to the seraphim, seraphim, seraphim's not hurt by fire. Seraphim's not harmed by fire, by the flame or by the coal. But these calls on the altar of God, they sacred, so sacred the seraphim's not allowed to touch it. So he grabs a hold of the special instruments that Father's made available for him, and he stretches forth his hand, and he takes them off the altar of coal, and he purges his sin, and takes away his uncleanness, his iniquity. Is that radical? What does the blood of Jesus do for you and me? What does the blood of Jesus do for you? Some of the, the priests who minister unto the daily provision of bread have forsaken their ministry. And they set no bread out before him, unfortunately. <laughs> That's sad. You know, Father has called you and I as ministers, as, as a holy priest and as kings reigning with him in this life right now. He's called us as a peculiar treasure and as a holy nation to keep the fire burning. Hallelujah. Father lit a fire in you. Father lit, I was baptized in the Holy Ghost in fire and he lit a fire on the other side of me. But he demands my participation. It's a covenant relationship. He's called me to come on into a realm that few people even begin to understand. A place of communion and fellowship where we live it by his body and by his blood, where we eat his flesh 
and drink his blood because we dwell in him. Wow. Job did not have that encounter. Elijah did not have that encounter. Abraham did not have that encounter. He saw it far off. There's some reason to believe that Moses got a glimpse of it. Because the new covenant light was seen upon his face. According to what Paul explained in 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Father is looking for some people who will break the barrier of satanic descent, deception, and worldly hindrance. It has captivated us in a Greek Roman society, in a Babylonianism that now exists that nobody wants to hear about. Because as soon as you start talking about these things, everybody goes duck and run. Everybody was willing to come see William Branham's Signs and Wonders and Miracles until he started talking about Babylon. Then they said, oh, he's crazy. Now they dishonored the man and said the miracles no longer function and they no longer work because they dishonored the man. They dishonored the vessel. Same vessel, same miracles, same signs, wonder, same anointing, same grace, same divine ability. But the honor left. Father's going to do greater work still. The Lord showed me, he said, he showed me how that Janice and Jambres was able to withstand Moses up to a certain point of the display of the power of God. Moses wasn't doing tricks. They were doing tricks. But to the onlooker, it looked like that the power of God being displayed in Moses' life was equivalent to the tricks that Janice and Jambres was doing. But then there came a greater display of the anointing and the power of God for someone who did not bend and bow, someone who was willing to work no matter what it cost him, no matter what. Come on, I'll tell you right now, signs and wonders and miracles got Moses in trouble. It didn't get him promoted. It got him in trouble. They were ready to take him out. Huh? It, it, it got him in trouble. It got him in trouble with And got everybody else in trouble too. You can be seated. You know, Father... Somehow, we've got to understand that there is a thing that would come up against and stop the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. There are those hindering spirits and powers of darkness that would constantly keep us preoccupied with deception and various forms of it so that we can't begin to see Him and operate with Him and function with Him as Elisha did with Elijah as Joshua did with Moses. Father's given you and I the privilege of being able to have a partnership with God the Holy Ghost right now. And there's a lot of distractions. There's a lot of things you want it has nothing to do with God. It takes you away from the things of the Spirit and doesn't bring you into them. I know a lot of people, they're sitting around. I know, I, I know where people are right now that 40 years ago, they were, you know, talking about long and one being in signs, wonders, and miracles. They went by the wayside long ago and got stuck in their own mental reasoning of things and their own religiosity. I went on. I'm shaking nations. I'm doing signs and wonders and miracles by his holy child, Jesus, because I, I went on. I was in the same predicament that they were in. The only difference is that I went on. I didn't stop along the way and settle out for something different. I didn't get distracted by all the stuff. You know, one day the Lord was talking to me, the Lord was talking to me and just saying, well, you could have done this thing and that thing and the other thing. I said, Papa, I'm your boy. I'm your boy. I don't want to do anything else. I'm your boy. Those guys, they got nothing. They got nothing with all their degrees and with all their prestige. They got nothing. I got you. You got me. I'm yours. And I'm desperate for more. Are you listening to me? Does, does he have you? Does he got you? Does he got you? Yes, everything. Hallelujah. I was talking to a guy. Let's check this out. So I was talking to... Afghani from from Afghanistan and last night this is ministry to him because he was the lift ride home <laughs> when we got off the airplane and he's been here for three years and he's going back 
uh, what do you say, two months or something like that. He's going back to Afghanistan to live. And I talked to him about the Pashtun because he's a Pashtun. And I told him his, where he came from. He's like, I do? I did? Wow. And I said, wait, well, we just got back from Kashmir. He said, you went to Kashmir? He said, all of us from Afghanistan are afraid to go to Kashmir. It's dangerous there. <laughs> Can you imagine that? People from Afghanistan are afraid to go to Kashmir. I said, oh, no, it's very wonderful. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. I was so welcomed in Kashmir. We went there to tear down the no trespassing sign that the devil put up. <laughs> Hallelujah. For us, I thought it to announce to a nation, behold, your God has come. Hallelujah. This is plant the flag of the kingdom of God and the kingdom of his Christ. I mean, does he got you? I'm talking to you. And does he got you? Does he got you enough to where tomorrow you're willing to step out and take the risk? And when you, if your boss has got a headache or a runny nose, you say, look, just stop everything. Hold everything. I'm going to take care of you right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command this cold to dry up. In Jesus' name, right now, you healed. He will to take the risk of being a complete idiot. Yeah. A person completely lost, uh, uh, left, you know, lost all reasoning, has left your senses behind. Are you willing to stand? Because I'm telling you, if you are, God's going to do great signs and wonders and exploits through your life. Father is calling you and I. He's calling us over into a place, a divine power and glory. I want... I want to take you in a kind of a, a bit of a deep subject. I, I don't know what I'm going to get to do here because I'm operating without the body. <laughs> I got the blood, but I don't have the body. So whosoever's assignment was to bring the, 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 uh, the representation of the flesh of Jesus Christ, the body of the Lord, please, would you please minister? Say, well, I left, I brought it, but I'm, three packages was ruined because you never used it. So what did it cost you? 50 cents? You know what I'm saying? Using tortillas or even using a matzah, you know. Well, anyway, come on. Just be faithful to God. Are you all in? Yes. I mean, are you, are you willing? You know, somebody said, I'm... You know, I'm going to put my reputation on the line. Where do they say, well, I'm putting God's reputation on the line. What if I say you healed and, and declare these things in the name of Jesus and it doesn't happen? Well, you know what? For you to do it is to obey God. For you not to do it is to disobey God. So the reality of it is, is that you're just a coward. That's why you're not doing it. And it's not about God's reputation. It's about your reputation. And we want you to get over yourself and start doing what God told you to do. Yeah. It's the divine assignment. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. God just, wants you, God just wants you to be in charge. Amen. You know, the Lord has given you and I the privilege of being his sons, of being his representatives in the earth, of being those who declare his power. I mean, he has absolutely given over to his church that's resident right here is far greater than the mantle of Elijah that fell upon Elisha. It's far greater than the goodness and the glory and the special anointings that uh, of Moses was able to impart unto Joshua. It's far greater than anything that was ever displayed in signs and wonders and miracles in the Old Testament is the fullness and the embodiment of the living God in Christ Jesus now who's come to dwell on the inside of us, to live out his life through us, who went away and imparted unto us an heirship and a co-inheritorship with Almighty God to go and to do the things that he himself was doing and is doing right now to be hidden away in us. And he says that he gives to us the authority to be sons of God. And, and the, the authority to be sons of God, first and foremost, is found in our receiving it, our believing it. You're going to have to redefine yourself by defining yourself. You're going to have to redefine who you believe you are by defining yourself in Christ Jesus. I'm saying this again. You have to redefine who you believe you are by defining yourself in Christ Jesus. All kinds of reports, all kinds of words. You know, I'm, I, I, I'm just there, praise God to represent the living God to a lot of different people in a lot of various different situations. And the first thing that I've got to do is I've got to struggle to throw down the word of man that has been given to them. And especially the word of a doctor. Especially the word of someone who supposedly, you know, knows themselves something. They don't know really anything as they ought to know it. It's just all smoke and mirrors. And by and large, it really is. It's just like they're more shocked that you got cured than, you know, you are. <laughs> you know, it's just all another theory, you know, just give another little piece of information, they'll add it into the little bread maker and come up with a recipe. 
you know, in the end. Bottom line of this, what, God, what did God say about you? And how is the word of God going to be effective in your life? When you begin to believe the gospel, because the gospel was preached to Israel, Father had given such a declaration of his divine appointment over their life to give them all of his blessings, to make them a treasured people in the earth, to put them above all the nations of the earth, to have his glory and his power seen and revealed in their midst that all the nations of the earth trembled because God was with them. And such an such a amazing and expressive, radical, exciting, dramatic way. I mean, I could come up with some more adjectives. Fire by night. Goodness. The fire. The There's God sitting on his throne right above us. That's him. That's, that's what that fire pillar is. That's him. That's his overcoat. That's what he wears when he goes out and visits men. That's his fire. Hallelujah. Rabakaya. Halashando prayer. I'm flying. say a shade by the day, a pillar, a cloud by day, a fire, a pillar of fire by night. Men and falling from heaven, water coming forth from the rock, signs and wonders and great exploits that, that every dimension of their life, I mean, their, their clothes don't wear out. They don't need to go shopping. They're just as new as the day they bought them. Their, their, their shoes, nothing corrupts. There's no corruption. There's no decay. No, their, their tin does not rust. Think about it. He, there's a place of living in God that we've not been willing to touch. We've not been willing to break past the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. We've not been willing to break through the barrier of the cares of life, the deceitfulness of riches and the pleasures of this world. We've got to be willing to break through the barrier. Father's calling us into a place of complete detachment and complete care, detachment from the cares of this life to come and to, to throw all of our trust in on him. This is where Adam fell. This is where Abraham succeeded. This is what Jesus personified. If I can get people to understand how much love, how much Abraham loved his firstborn son, Ishmael. He loved him. It didn't matter if he was from Hagar. He loved him. It's a son. He was a righteous man filled with the love of God. Father said, he can't be here. You send him away. He didn't argue with Papa. He didn't laden the camels with gold and silver to take care of Ishmael for a lifetime because he had enough gold and silver to do so. He didn't laden the camels with all food and, 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 and water to take care of them on the journey and, and, and work out with them and strategize and make a map and declare a vision. And as many of God's people, even those who seem to be those most given over to trusting God and moving in faith, they would still write out a map, make out a, you know, a whole concept of heaven that's going to go down from here to Egypt or here to wherever. No. He sent them out with a day's provision of food and water. He thrust them into the care of Almighty God. Because he knew the Father was a better taker, caretaker than he himself was. He understood how to move with God, how to walk in faith, how to walk in a place of complete trust and reliance upon the Almighty God. This is where we don't break past the barrier, people. I'm just telling you, you can be condemned, you can be overwhelmed, you can hear the voice of God and ride, run and hide and shame and talk about whatever it is you want to talk about to try to somehow disqualify what I'm saying. But this is for those who want to understand how to see Him and how to move with Him where the Holy Ghost becomes as real to you as Elijah was to Elisha, as Moses was to Joshua. God's calling you. You have to understand, well, am I going to do this? Am I going all the way? I'm going to stuck in ritual and religion. Am I going to go into the fellowship or relationship with him? Am I going to recognize that I'm this temple that God dwells in me? Am I going to define myself based upon what God said? Am I going to redefine myself by defining myself? Am I going to redefine who I am by defining myself by what God said I am? That I am a son. I've been given the authority as a son because I believe upon his name. I've received what he said. I've received it. I've received it into myself, into my being. It's this cherished thing to me that I'm an heir and, an, and a joint heir with him, that I've been made one with him, that I've been given the gift of his righteousness, that I've been given the gift of his holiness, that I've been given this place of power, I've been given this place of authority. Think about the disciples and what it was like for them. I mean, because all of us can, you know, we could wish to be in their place where they're walking around with him for three years plus. And they're watching the great exploits of the mighty power of God. 
And he gives to them, as we read in Matthew chapter 9, he gives to them all power and all authority over all unclean spirits to cast them out and over all diseases to cure them. But yet he says, wait a minute, there's a greater encounter for you. He said, I've, God's got a greater encounter. I want you to think about this. The creator became the firstborn of creation. The creator became the firstborn of creation so that he could ransom and redeem us. God risked everything. God, I'll tell you, God risked everything. God saw us in the imprisonment of darkness and he risked, he risked everything. I'm telling you, it wasn't a dry run. Jesus was tempted and tested in, in every way that Adam was tempted, in every way that Adam was tested. He is tempted and tested in every way that men are tempted and tested. This is what, this is, this is solid yes. word of God. This is a solid declaration of the doctrines of God, of what Jesus Christ went to, through. And if he wasn't, if there wasn't a possibility for him to have submitted himself to the devil and disobeyed, it was a dry run. It wasn't a dry run. He learned obedience by the things that he suffered. He learned to choose the good and to refuse the evil. He... he, he he was made the, cap the captain of our salvation was perfected. Right. Think about this. He was perfected through sufferings. He learned to be, the sufferings. People say, well, people talk about Christian sufferings and the doctrine of Christian sufferings. Well, you must understand any doctrines of Christian sufferings, you must understand in context of the model son, Christ Jesus. So if Jesus suffered it, you and I could suffer it too. That would be the sufferings of Christ. He never had a broken leg. He never had a migraine headache. He never had cancer. He never had all these other things that people talk about. These are the sufferings of Christ. They're not the sufferings of Christ. Understand the sufferings of Christ. I'm not going to go in to talk about that tonight. Because, but I do, want to under, I do want to underscore this for you. All the doctrines of God are established in His only begotten Son, Jesus. So if you see it in Jesus, then it's true. And if you don't see it in Jesus, then it's not true. Because He came as the full embodiment of everything that describes and reveals what the will of the Father is. And there is a call. He's saying, come on in. Come with me. I want to take you in the higher eyes. I want to take you in the deeper depths. I've opened up the door for you to be able to receive all of my fullness. Of all of his fullness have all we received. That's powerful, isn't it? Right there in the same, it's right there in the same, as it were, chorus, as you find, as the word of God reveals to us these things in John chapter 12, uh, John chapter 1, verses 12 through 16. And of all of his fullness, of all we received, hallelujah, and grace for grace. Amen? Amen. And that is, a, that is amazing. But yet we still hold on to our concept of who we are in this life, who we are in this world. The Lord says, no, I want you to lose your life so that you can have mine. He says, I want you to come. This is the terms of the covenant. Come dwell in me and I'll dwell in you. In other words, come and live my life and I'll live in you. This one is, this is Robatai. She come, Reteya, Halimeshikayo, Jamori, John 15, 3. Has anybody heard it yet? Come dwell in me and I'll dwell in you. Yes. Yeah, they, somebody says, oh, they want to talk about the doctrine of progressive sanctification. Well, let me help you with that. You the branch, he's the vine. He's Hallelujah. The and the nutrients of the, uh, uh, that, that bring life to the branch would be maybe representative of the Holy Ghost. How sanctified must you be? How separated, how much a part of God must you be in order to be a branch inside of the vine? I'm telling you, neither one exists without the other. Think about that. Amen. Think about that. Cut the branch completely off the vine to cease to exist. Without the vine, the branch could not exist. This is what, oh, come on, people. You just don't even understand. It is amazing. I don't even understand. I want to understand. I want to comprehend that which I'm apprehended for. I've been arrested by God to take a hold of this glory and this realm of heaven. Will you break the barrier of your own mind and limitations that you confined yourself to? And start believing God's good word and just start doing, just step out and start doing it. And say, I can't do it. Huh? Because there's a greater one who's come on the inside of you, the power of God. If you've got to receive something, there's an authority. Hallelujah. 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 You know, even a bold person, even a real bold person can exercise some authority. If you're real bold, you might be able to stop traffic on I-5. You have to choose your time. But if you're real bold and you're able to get out there and start moving slowly into the traffic, you may actually be able to stop it. The police can do it, no problem. The authority that Father has given to you and me to understand who we are in Him, 
to begin to comprehend that we complete in Him who is the head of all things. We complete in Him who is the personification of all divine power. Now, open your Bibles with me. Let's just talk to you a little bit about this life that God has given to us. And, and let me just try to deal with all your concerns. Because people, people say, tell me all the time, well, you don't understand my circumstances and my situations and, and my unique challenges. Oh, true, I, I do, I really do. I understand. I understand that you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, that you've been born again, you've been made a new creation, you become the temple of God, the Holy Ghost lives in you, Father has come to dwell in you, Christ Jesus is in you, God the Holy Spirit is not only in you, but with you, and He's baptized you in all of His glory, and everything the Father has has been made available and put to your disposal. Amen. I understand your unique circumstances, situations, and challenges. <laughs> The problem is you don't understand. And I'm here to convince you, hallelujah, of what God says. Because the gospel was preached to Israel, but it didn't profit them because they didn't believe it. God had to wait until there was a people who said, whether we, will, whether we live or whether we die, we're going to do what God says to do. This is the call. God says, are you all in yet? And you go, I am, but let me recalculate my bills. Yeah, I'm in, but let me recalculate my commitments. Yeah, I'm in, but you know what? I want to do it my way. Oh, dear people, tonight I pray in the name of Jesus that you will hear the call of God and you begin to go into a place called prayer and break the barriers of limitations that have been set upon your life that has, keep, that has kept you from the spirit of wisdom and revelation to understand and feel and touch and hear, see dreams and have dreams and, have, and see visions to begin to move and operate with God the Holy Ghost, to understand that there's a place that obedience, of obedience that God has called us to, that Jesus said, I'll come and I'll manifest myself to you. you. You know, if the equation is too difficult for you, reverse engineer it. In other words, start from the answer and work your way back to the question, the problem. Are you listening to me? So the, you know, you're saying, well, I don't know where I'm at. Well, I'm going to ask you this. Jesus come made us manifest himself to you? Then you need to get yourself in obedience. Amen. There's areas. Somebody says, a preacher said to me one time, he said, do you think we miss in hope? Whole paragraphs? I said, I think we're missing whole books. Huh? We, I said, I, I, we missing whole chapters and whole books that we're not willing to live. We just want to pick and choose whatever it is that, that we particularly like. It fits in with whatever we're comfortable with. You hear the word of God? He tells you to cast out Ishmael. You're going to say, okay, and then you're going to go home and repent and going to talk to your wife and you decide not to. And so therefore, you're never going to take an offer Isaac up not when the promise has come. You're going to justify that. I'm going to tell you right now, Abraham was no exception. He was no different from you and I. He had the same ability to reason his way through it, to justify his state, and, and literally to just completely remove God from the equation and explain away what he heard in the Spirit. He did, but he learned how to walk in the Spirit. How? He didn't learn how to walk in the Spirit like we learn in the Spirit. He learned how to walk in faith, but not like we learn how to walk in faith. He learned how to walk in trusting God because he, the voice of the Lord came to him and called him and said, Abraham, come follow me. I want you to leave everything behind. I, tomorrow morning, I want you to get up. I want you to quit your job. I know you're 75, and it's tough to change when you're 75. I understand this. I know that all your family is here, that everything, all your goods are here. You built your house here. You got all your stuff here. You got all of your, you know, you know Sarah's got all of her stuff in the, in the, in the kitchen and, and in the living room and all your memories are here. But I want you to get up in the morning and I want you to leave. Where are we going? I'll tell you when you get there. <laughs> the walk of faith. There's a great company, there's a great cloud of witnesses saying, what? What are you guys doing? There's a great cloud of witnesses that are around us right now. The great cloud of witnesses that are talked about in Hebrews chapter 12. That, you know, and really, when, when Paul begins to break down Hebrews chapter 12, he's talking to people who are being disobedient. They're not willing to move forward with God. They're thinking about going back. They're neglecting so great a salvation. They're in jeopardy of perishing. Somehow they're, re they're redefining what God has said. And he, and he goes, and so he takes them all the way back to Abel. And he, and he walks them through all the wonderful divine opportunities that were given to men who did not cast away their confidence and step aside of the calling. And he says, the great call of witnesses around you right now. From Abel, including Noah and Abraham, and Elijah, including Paul, he was there, even though he was the writer. 
calling to us to come and run the race with joy, to come take a hold of this divine opportunity that has been given to us, to press through all the things that would hinder us and keep us out, have our eyes open to recognize that we've come to Zion. Yes. Zion is not something that was defined by a geographical location in the Middle East, you know, a couple of thousand years ago. Zion is the city of the king. It is the place where, where God himself dwells. Amen. It is a place that you and I right now exist in. It is a heavenly realm. It's the heavenly Jerusalem, a great company of angels. Innumerable company of angels surround us right now. That's where the church is at. This is where we're at. We're seated together with Christ Jesus in the heavenly realm. It's not positional. It's a walk of faith. It's a walk of the Spirit. A walk of faith is not some kind of blind, you know, observance to an ideology. It's the moving of the Spirit of God that causes you to see and to know the reality of that which is before you so that you're not deceived and carried away with all the lies that comes, up, comes knocking or banging on your door every day. So you can begin to walk this thing out in God. You define you what you believe to be reality based upon the truth of the word. Because your reality, believe me, people, reality is what you hold to be true. And so you have misconceptions and wrong perceptions of your observations because you live by wrong laws. You live by, by wrong experience that has polluted your judgment. God's come to give to us His Word so that we can understand what truth is, so that we can understand what reality is, so that we can say those things and speak those things which God has declared. So we believe, therefore we speak. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. That's why I can say to the blind, you see. I have a different reality. I'm not struggling with something. This is what God has empowered me to be as a son, as an heir, as a joint heir. This is what he's commissioned me to do. This is why he gave to me this opportunity to have this encounter with the Holy Ghost. You think about it. You think about the disciples who'd received such divine power and the Lord says, no, there's, so you gotta, there's something greater you've got to get. You can't even be, you can't even, you're not qualified to be my witnesses. I know I gave you all authority and power over unclean spirits to cast them out and over all diseases to cure them, but you're not qualified yet. Whoa. Man, if they're not qualified, what kind of condition you reckon everybody else is in? But there's the same qualifying encounter with God available right now. This was available to them on the day of Pentecost. They qualified them with divine power. Now to go and move into a whole other dimension of the display of the person of the living God. The person of Christ Jesus. The, to come with the authority of the kingdom of God. To come with the authority of God himself as heir of God. You know, when you think about sonship, listen, when you think about sonship as it's defined... And, and, and I'm going I'm to work my way to Colossians here in a minute. But when you think about sonship as it is defined in, um, in two places, two very important places. Sonship is defined in Romans chapter 8. And you look how sonship is defined in Romans chapter 8. And then we're going to go in the only other place where sonship is defined, Galatians chapter 4. So look at Romans chapter 8. You look and see how sonship is defined. And it's defined by those who walk in... The realms of the spirit. But the same as walking in the realms of faith. Faith is a, a supernatural exploit of trusting God. All Paul's thesis on justification by faith is built upon Habakkuk 2, chapter 2, in verse 4. That the just or the righteous shall live by faith. But it's literally, the Hebrew word simply is a declaration of trusting God. Just as Abraham trusted God. Hallelujah. Think about it. <laughs> You know, without, listen, I'm telling you right now, I, I'll mess your theology up right now. Are you ready? Yes. Yes. Those that are in the flesh cannot please God. You listen to me? Romans 8, 9. Are you with me? Yes. Huh? Enoch, please God. Uh-oh. Huh? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. People say faith doesn't exist in the Old Testament. Huh? Listen, Enoch, please God. And it was specifically defined in Hebrews chapter 11 as moving in faith. Hallelujah. Even in the time of the law, God was calling men to come and walk with him in love. Few, few even walked in the law. Fewer still walked. Few, listen, many refused the law and, and the love. Fewer, few re, was willing to accept the law and walk in the law. And fewer still willing to accept and walk in the love of God. Here it is, Shema Israel. 
Yehoah el Hainu, Yehoah Chad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your God, the Lord is one. You should love the Lord your God. Tehavti. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your nafish, your being, your soul, your, your existence, and with all your moed, your, your strength, your ability. I want you to love me. Papa's called everybody, even in the Old Testament, in, in, before the law. He called them, and even in the midst of all. He called them into a love relationship. But people didn't want to come into the love relationship. They didn't understand the proper response to God's love is to love him back. But that love is expressed by obedience. They didn't understand that God, he said, what I've asked you to do isn't far from you. It is not beyond your reach. Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 11. But in verse 15 or verse 14, it is in your, it is in your mouth and in your heart. This is the word which I've spoken. The power and the authority to do everything that I've expressed and, and purpose for you to do. Look out what he, look out and see, you know, all that the word produces. The miracle of his, of, his, of his word. The power and the authority of his word. The spoken word that you and I, if we would just believe it, you stand gazing at the stars at night. Don't be too, you know, captivated by the wonders of... Uh, Galaxies beyond the, the hundreds of thousands. B galaxies that represent his eternalness. That no matter how many you count, there's still that many more. Don't be so amazed at them. Just be amazed at the same word that spoke those things into creation. It's spoken into creation. You and I as well after the Spirit. And has spoken these things that God has purposed us to do. And all we've got to do is begin to move with God and be all in. And being all in is always going to be a risk. It's like you're packing up tomorrow and you're leaving everything. There are not many people here in this room that would probably do that. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry to tell you that. But we want to help you and get you prepared yeah. to do that. But isn't God good? He's this long-suffering. I mean, my goodness, it's just too bad. He's just got one big giant nursery. It's time for somebody, you know, to go ahead and move on up in the sunship on the level to where that I write unto you, young men. I write unto you, young men, because you have defeated Satan at every point because the word of God dwells in you. Come on, think about that. The word of God dwells in you and you've defeated Satan at every point. Come on. I write unto you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. And that's to the babes in arms. I write into you babes in arms. Because you're, come on, come on, man. It is time for some people to step up and begin to move in the authority that God has given us, given us the keys of the kingdom yes. to bind. I mean, a partnership that whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Right now, the church is the biggest hindrance to the move of God in America. I said the church is the biggest hindrance to the move of God in America. true faith as though is is made void the power and the authority that God has given is made void because of the activity and the actions of what goes on in the church of the nation it's not Obama's fault it's not the Congress fault it's not the Illuminati trilateral association all these other crazy ideas and notions my goodness hey newsflash Satan is the god of this world the prince of the power of the air give me a break where did that become new news Give me a break. Well, I'm going to talk to you about something that Christ Jesus did and the authority that he gave to his church to invalidate all of us. Yeah. You're going to have to break the barrier. Yeah. Yeah. You can't be entangled by it and have any authority over it. Yeah. You're going to have to take the risk. Uh -huh. You have to take the risk of getting so close to God he can tell you pack up in the morning, you're leaving. And you're going someplace he's not telling you, you'll know when you get there. <laughs> Hallelujah, I'm telling you. When the Lord told uh, Abraham to go and sacrifice Isaac, he didn't tell him where he was going. He said, you're going to go on a journey, and he'll sh I'll show you that place when you get there. That's what he said. If there's any time not to be discerning or to hear the voice of God, that might be the opportunity. <laughs> because that's how unmistakable and how all-powerful and the gripping, the grip, <laughs> the gripping effect of the direction of the Holy Ghost has on those who hear the voice of the Lord and respond to him. After a three days journey, amen, hallelujah. After three days, a lot of work gets done, amen. 
Hallelujah. To the third day, he's already resurrected. I and the, I and the lad are going to go over yonder and worship, and we'll return again unto you. <laughs> Listen to the faith. He knows who God is. Okay, I'm ready, man. I'm going to slice his throat. And then Papa's going to raise him up for the dead. Hallelujah. God, come on, think about it. I'm all in. I'm all in. What do you want me to do? You want me to take him? Take him out quick, just like I would a lamb sacrifice. Okay, got it. Tie him up, bind him up, put him on the altar, give me the knife. And he, was, he, he knew how to do it. He knew how to make it happen. Touch not the lad. Come on, people. Come on. He won each, either way. He won if God stopped him, and he won if he did it all the way, because God's going to raise him up from the dead. Because he understood the oath of God, that God has swore to him and promised him. And God could not lie. He was in a covenant relationship and a communion with the Father of intimacy, where God Almighty, the Father, where Yahweh, or Yahweh, but not Yahweh, Yahweh, or Yahweh, but not Jehovah, came to him and revealed himself and sat down with him underneath the oaks of memory. Huh? Hallelujah. You said, comfort yourself, Ohio. But Sarah, hurry up. Make some bread. Come on. Get some meat going. Are you doing good? Let me, let me take your sandals off. Let me wash your feet. Ooh. Genesis 18 will revolutionize your concept of who God is. In fact, the whole Bible will revolutionize, <laughs> revolutionize your concept of who God is. If people would just read it instead of listening to some spin doctor telling us what God said. Listen, there's, everybody is without excuse. God has plainly made known what his intentions are, what he has purposed about for us, what he's commanded us to be. Because his word is not beyond you. It's not uh, out of reach, something that you cannot understand or attain to. But it's with you, and in you. It's in your heart, and in your mouth, even the word which is preached. And, and that's only just in Deuteronomy chapter 30, verse 14. Paul repeats it and makes it the very center, as it were, the centerpiece of the gospel when he, when he repeats it and quotes it by application in Romans chapter 10 and verse 5 and 6. Think about it. Verse, hallelujah, 8. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> my wife's just like the Holy Ghost, you know. <laughs> she brings into my remembrance. Look at defining sonship. Hallelujah. Uh, people get stuck on the wrong verses here. Uh, people get stuck all the time on the wrong verses here. I want you to get stuck on the right verses. If you get stuck on the right verses and understand the right verses, then you'll be going to struggle so much with the wrong verses and you move right along in context. Amen. Yeah, you got stuck on mortifying the deeds which are done in their body. I mean, then the, the, the monastics, give me a break. What the monastics and the ascetics did, they messed everything up. They defined for us the doctrine of suffering. I mean, one woman in, in the 1800s, she just testified how the power of God was so revealed in her life because about 75% of her back was eaten up with maggots. She's talking about boasting in her, mortifying her body. My goodness. Let's go over here and just understand what God did say. Hallelujah. My goodness, Father, and called us to such uncleanness, such nastiness, such a messed up idea. He's commanded us to be in him. What a commandment. I'm telling you, that great. He says, for us, we've not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but we've received the spirit of sonship. Ha, potera, tia. Listen. De prosefina mastela kista, de tista romanta, efrenia, sonship, berifi, not adoption. I nobody adopted here, huh? You ain't adopted here. You are born into this, and I can't help it that so many of these translators take a a word, huyathesis, and try to translate it something that has a mis total misapplication. Huyathesis can only be sonship. The Greek word is huyathesis. It can only be sonship, and by definition, it's sonship. He says to us, we receive sonship, whereby we say, God Almighty is my dad. Huh? Yeah, I saw a little cartoon the other day. It, just really, it, was, it was a good one, okay? <laughs> the kid says to one other kid, one little guy says to another little guy, he says, is any of your relatives famous? He said, well, I don't want to brag, but I heard, God, I heard my dad calling God his father. <laughs> and then this is, this is, come on, people. Come on, it's about time. It's about time that we begin to allow God the Holy Ghost to show us how to break the barrier of the, of the limitation of faith, of the limitation of revelation and understanding where we really, we really believe this. 
we, we, we really believe that when we speak, God has put the authority of his word in our mouth, that mountains move out of our way. <laughs> that we speak and, uh, and, and, and we loose things and God in, in partnership and, and commitment to us in this authority that he's given, he looses it in the realms of heaven. Amen. Oh, church arise. Yeah. Church arise. Quit blaming it on Congress. <laughs> quit, 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 quit blaming it on the Senate. Quit blaming it on the presidents. Presidency. Huh? God, that is nothing. That means nothing. It means nothing. That means nothing. Come on, people. Governments have always been corrupt. It's got cor corrupt, unredeemed men in it who are puppets to demonic powers. Give me a break. What? What's? What's the surprise here? I don't get it. Why is everybody like so, ah, you know, this is wild. How can it happen? How can it be happening? Are you kidding me? And especially the church. Are you listening to me? Paul wasn't concerned about Nero. Nero was a dictator. Give me a break. You talk about Illuminati, trilateral. World order, I mean, whatever. I mean, he personified the worst of it all. He just killed you because he didn't like the way you smiled. I mean, he had absolute authority over everybody's life. He was a nut, fully <laughs> demon possessed. And Paul said, Pray for the guy, man. He can't harm us. Pray for the guy. We in charge. Paul, almost like single handedly, defeated the Roman Empire. He delivered the death blow. It took a couple hundred years for it to completely crumble, about 200. He by himself went and fought with beast at Ephesus and brought down the stronghold of the worship of Artemis. Or Esther, or whatever you want to call her, because she comes by many names. Asherah, if you're Phoenician. That's what Jezebel called her. She made Ashtar or Artemis or Esther, Behoah's consort, a prostitute. She did. That's what they did. They were whacked out, man. It's pretty radical, pretty radical, huh? And they all just thought they were worshiping God, didn't they? You read, you understand. You understand that when the king of Assyria came down to destroy Israel, because God gave him the power and the authority to do it, he said, your Baal cannot deliver you. Your Baal and his Asherah cannot deliver you. He, he, and he mistake, he mistake, because they so represented Yehoah wrong that the nations of the earth thought Yehoah, the God that delivered them out of the land of Egypt, was Baal, was Baal and his Asherah. Pretty radical, huh? Paul, by his Baal single-handedly, fought with beasts at Ephesus and brought down the power of the queen of heaven. Brought down her reign. He brought down her reign. He brought down the reign of the mother of harlots. He did. He did. She's well positioned again, unfortunately, because the church is a moving in authority. The Holy Ghost himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God, we are the, and then this is, is a, new, a unique word, that we had the children of God, and literally it's children with respect to his offspring. Whew. Moshe Limataya. Hallelujah. Born of an incorruptible seed by the word of God which lives and abides forever. If we can just redefine who you are. Hallelujah. By what God has defined you to be. Hallelujah. They're offspring of God. I'm telling you right now, brother to Almighty God Christ Jesus, the creator who became a creation, the firstborn of creation. To say, oh, to step into all of creation, to redeem those things which are not only on earth, but also in heaven. Figure that out. You can't figure nothing out. You're just going to have to go ahead and understand this. Called you into a, God's called you into a place of divine revelation. It comes because you're so in love with the Father. You fellowship with Him. He can come show you what all He did before there was ever anything and why He decided to do what it is He did. Huh? And why He decided to bring you into the plan. Huh? So that you can begin to understand his inheritance that he has in you. He's got an inheritance. In you. God's, got a, God's got an inheritance in you. He wants you to be able to understand it. He's got some things he's purposed for you to do. Not only now, but in the eternities to come. Hallelujah. Whew, what, what's going to be revealed? Huh? Behold, huh? what manner of love the Father bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. Huh? Isn't that awesome? Huh? 
though it does not appear what we should be, we know that we see him as he is, for when we see him, we should be like him. And everybody who has this hope purifies himself even as he's pure. Come on, get with the program. Purify yourself. Jesus is coming. Hallelujah. Purify yourself into the divine purity that's been given you. Think about it. Huh? Hmm? Perfect holiness in the gift of holiness that's been given you. Huh? Give yourself to every form and dimension of his demeanor and action and character and righteousness in the gift of righteousness that has been given to you. Hallelujah. You've been born of his spirit so that you could be made one with the Holy Ghost so that you can receive those things that Father wants to freely give to us of all that he himself possesses. Hallelujah. What has not entered into the heart of men, I, what eyes not seen and ears not heard, nor has the heart of men been able to contemplate, but now he's revealed them to us by the Holy Spirit. But people aren't listening. People aren't listening. They're too busy. They're too preoccupied with all of their stuff. And God says, it's time for you to come out from among them. Be separate, says the Lord. And touch not the unclean things so that I can talk to you, so that I can receive you. Pretty radical. But I want to just, you know, I'm trying to get to this point. Huh? The Holy Ghost, hallelujah. The Holy Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we the children of God. And the children, look at this. He's, he's telling us, when you, when you back up to verse 14, as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they the sons of God. Verse 14 sets the theme here. And now he, he helps us understand the real definition and authority of being a son. Then if I'm a son, if, if children, if children, if his seed, if his offspring, if born of the Spirit, if born of the Word, if born of the resurrection, come on now, come on, quit. People come, come on, keep coming to the altar call until you get it. But once you get it, go ahead and explore the heights, the length, the breadth, the depth. Come on, come on, let's, for, come on, we can go search out the vastness of who he is, of his authority, of his glory, of his power, of his virtue, of his godliness, of his glory. Father gave us everything that we need that pertains to life and godliness because he's called us to his glory and to his virtue, to his glory and to his purity. Hey, listen, I'm telling you right now, purity is something that is not, is not cherished by people, but it's the realms of access into the glory of the holies of holies, the full revelation of who Father is. It's something that's a great gift. People don't understand lowliness and meekness, but people, this is where the miracles of great signs and wonders and the exploits of God begin to be revealed, where Father himself begins to be made manifest, where it's Father doing the work and not us. Yeah. And it all comes down at the end of the day, it's about doing the will of the Father and Father being revealed because it's all about Papa. It's all about Father. Uh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Mm. He tells us then, children, if children, if children, then you're heir of God. And that's something you need later. That's something we get now. It's the authority they received. Come on, people. Just look at yourself in the mirror and say, look, it's done. you're done. <laughs> look at yourself in the mirror and say, you're done. From now on, on a daily basis, you are not a part of the decision making. <laughs> Anytime you speak up, we're telling you to shut up. <laughs> Serve yourself notice. Amen. Come to, to deny yourself. Serve yourself notice. Amen. Quit blaming it on something that it is not. Serve yourself notice. Understand that if you're going to be a disciple, you must take up your cross. You deny yourself every day. Take up your cross and follow him. Yeah. It's a wonderful thing how, how loud God begins to speak when you stop living by what you think, yeah. by your opinion, yeah. and by your decision, and by your intellect. And by your glorious insights that you have through all of your training in school. Shut it down, people. Start living by the word of God and everything begins to change. Father forms these things in us. It just happens. We mature and we grow into hearing his voice simply because we give ourselves to the obedience of the word. I've heard so many people talk about all these crazy ideas about hearing the voice of God. I'd like for you to be quiet. In nice terms, shut up. And let's just start hearing the voice of God as he's declared his unchanging, immutable word that is established forever, that he watches over to perform. Because we start obeying his word, I'm telling you right now, we begin to be trained to hear his voice. Take a little Samuel, take a little guy, put him to just ministering to the light. Keep him, you just keep the lights on. you ministering to the revelation of who God is and the revelation of God's will, which is what is represented in the line of the manure. 
It was also representing the seven spirits of the Lord, just the revelation, the manifest presence of the living God. And so it's not going to be long, and you're going to hear the audible voice. Hallelujah. You can break the barrier of silence. Hmm? You can break the barrier of doubt and unbelief. Huh? You can break the barrier of deception. Listen, blindness of blind, mind blinding spirits don't work only in the full impact that it has upon the lost. Mind blinding spirits work in part among God's people. And then if you've forgotten these things, if you don't give all attendance to making your calling and election sure, then you are blinded. You've been blinded. You forgot that you were purged from your old sins. You can't see it far off. It's time to see, people. It's time to start seeing. It's time to get excited about the treasure that God has placed in these earthen vessels, that the excellency of His glory and power of God is about time somebody gets a hold of the God factor. Amen. Amen. I know about your doubt factor and your human factor and your can't do it factor and oh, oh, the old me factor. But how about the gun factor? How about Christ and you factor? How about you the living, how about you the, the, the temple of the living God? Hallelujah. How about you being taught of God? Hallelujah. That you don't even need men to teach you. Hallelujah. But the same spirit that you receive, the same anointing that you receive teaches you all things, even as it has taught you. You're supposed to exist in God, Christ Jesus. You're supposed to exist in Him. My whole existence is in Him. Jesus said, if you exist, if you'll, if you'll live my life, I'll live in you. Isn't that, shouldn't that be turned around? No, He said, if you'll live my life, I'll live in you. So I want you to step out. Everybody's waiting for Him to live in us so that we can live His life. No, 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 no. He's done that. He wants you to believe it. You live His life and He'll live in you. Amen. You for signs and wonders and miracles. Yes. God is commanding signs, wonders, and miracles. God's commanding righteousness on the right hand, righteousness on the left. God is commanding perfecting holiness in the fear of God. God is commanding that you purify yourself from every, that every unclean thing that you don't allow it in your life, that you separate yourself from it. Huh? He's made us righteous, not unrighteous. He's made us light, not darkness. He's made us his temple. Think about people, what God's called you and I to do. As his sons, he's given us air. Sonship is defined. Being born of God is defined in this place of divine authority that you're going to have to be willing to start living up to. Please. Father needs some representatives. He needs some people to go on in Pentecost. Yeah. Not just to sit around, shout hallelujah, and run around in circles. He needs to be people. Go fine. Enjoy the presence of the Lord. That's, hey, listen, that's a cut above a lot of the church right now. Just enjoy the presence of the Lord. I mean, I'm happy. I'm happy being in a church where people understand the presence of the Lord. But you got to understand, the body of Christ is not even defined without the workings of the gifts of the Spirit. Paul defined the body of Christ in context of the working of the gifts of the Spirit. He understand he defined the body of Christ in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 as the manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. It is not defined outside of the word of knowledge, the word of wisdom, the discerning of spirits, the working of miracles, the gifts of healing, the gift of faith, prophecy, tongues, interpretation of tongues. To one is given as the eye, and to one is given as the ear, and to one is given as the hand, and to one is given as the foot. Well, we're going to help you with that. Before this night is over, in Jesus' name, Amen. you're going to start being zealous to, prophe zealous to prophesy. Amen. Huh? You're going to start, you're going to start being zealous, hallelujah, full of the zeal of the Lord that God starts speaking through you in the midst of his house. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, come on now. Oh, yeah, come on now. Oh, yeah, come on now. You don't, you don't, and don't wait till you get to church to have some emergency tongues. They get in church, they haven't been flowing in the Holy Ghost as they ought, and then they got to try to kick in the emergency tongues so they can hurry up, catch up, yield to the place of the, yield to the Holy Ghost, be in that place of receptivity. But praise God for emergency tongues. <laughs> praise God. I mean, praise God is an unspeakable gift of love and mercy and grace. He's amazing. Yes, yes. I'd rather have emergency tongues in the church than not have anything. Than they have human tongues. I want human tongues, huh? Your tongues are either your tongue is either set on fire of the Holy Ghost or set on fire of hell. You choose. I'm going with it. I'm going Holy Ghost. 
Huh? Anybody in here going with hell? I'm going with the Holy Ghost. I'm going with what God is doing. Sonship authority. Father wants us to be led with the Spirit. He wants us to let, be led to the Spirit. He wants us to walk in the realm of faith. He wants us to trust God. He doesn't want to kind of trust God. Well, God, I'm going to trust you with this. I'm going to trust you with my, with my, hmm. Uh, what am I going to trust you with? Ah, I'm going to trust you with, I'm going to trust you with my life after I die. I'm throwing that all in on you. That when I die, you got me. Well, what are you going to trust me with right now? What are you, how's faith going to be developed in you and increased in you right now? How are you going to step out with God right now? How are you going to get a hold of him? How are you, how are you going to lay hold of him? Father has given to us a supernatural divine gifting and power called prayer that we little understand the authority, the realms of the spirit, the occupation, even of the word of God, which is spirit in life, something that happens to us that begins to train us to think different, act different, see different, think different, speak different. Person, a preacher friend of mine is going through some challenges right now. I say, here's what you need to do. You know, they were just talking to me about different possibilities. I said, here's what you need to do. You need to start praying in the Holy Ghost like you never prayed before. You need to start building yourself up in your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. You build yourself up in your most holy faith, praying. You need to start praising God, and giving thanks, and being filled with the Spirit, speaking yourself in Psalms, hymns, spiritual songs like never before, because there you're going to find a dominance. You're going to find a God power, a divine authority to bring captive every thought that works against faith and the outpouring of the Spirit of the living God through your life. Yeah. Father's calling you up. He's calling you to the place of authority. Let me just quickly, quickly turn you there to, to uh, Galatians chapter 4. Look at, look at, once again, the definition of sonship. The outworking of sonship in Galatians chapter 4. You know, Paul lays out the argument is as long as you're a child, as long as you're under the law, you're a child. You're under tutors and governors. And though you're heir of all things, you differ nothing from a servant. But when he talks about the born again experience, he talks about the born again experience as being the instant, the moment that you're born again, that you're authorized to function with the authority of all that your father has. Immediately, when you step into sonship, you leave the tutors and the mentors as, a, as someone that is a child under the law. You immediately step in at the born again experience, the right and the ability, the authority to function in divine power and ability. Look at what he says. He says, but when you, but he says, but when, verse 4, but when the fullness of the time was come, God sent forth a son made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive sonship. Yes. Not the adoption of sons. Those are add-on words. It doesn't say that in any Greek text. It doesn't say that in any Greek text. Sonship, to receive sonship. And because you are sons, um, see, sonship, sons, because you are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your hearts, crying, God's my dad. God's my dad. God's my papa. Hallelujah. God's my papa. Almighty God is my dad. He's my God. I'm his people. He's my father. I'm a son. Look here. Wherefore, thou art no more a servant, but a son. And if a son, then you are heir of God. Through Christ Jesus. To grab a hold of the reality of this divine authority that has been given us in Christ Jesus. And it is Christ Jesus. Go with me to Colossians quickly. Colossians chapter 1. <laughs> you know, whew, who is Christ Jesus? Hmm. Something that you can only really begin to apprehend and begin to utilize in a way beyond a, a child. You begin, begin to utilize and function in as a son with authority because the spirit of wisdom and revelation has been allowed to work in your life. So that you might understand the exceeding greatness of his power that has been given to you. 
When God raised Jesus from the dead and set him at his own right hand in a heavenly realm, where also he seated you together with him. Who set him at his own right hand in a heavenly realm, where also you seated together with him. The exceeding greatness of his power that was given to us when he seated him in a heavenly realm and at that moment he poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost, the promise of the Father and the rivers of God begin to flow out of everybody who drank of the water that Jesus supplied. An unlimited, un undiminishing glory of God that is so explosive and so invasive and so powerful that God is to describe it not as a river, not as a stream, not as a... Not as a creek, not as a stream, not as a river, but as rivers. I think we'd be in full-blown revival if everybody had the move of God to look like a, a, a garden hose. If everybody came to the meeting and there was a garden hose flow of God through their life, it would say, this is some volume of expression. Huh? huh. And that garden, I mean, think about it. The life and power of God on the level of a garden hose. Did you know that that will make, if you dug a 20-acre reservoir, that was 10 foot deep and 20 acres in diameter, which is a huge reservoir, that at a flow rate of about two to three gallons a minute, which is just a small flow, that thing is gonna be beautiful and filled to the brim in no time at all. Man, that'll look great in the midst of the church. It'll look great in the midst of the church. The Father has applied to us this wonderful flow of heaven that is such, with such expression of God's divine glory and person and presence. Have you enjoyed the manifest presence of God every day for a single week? Have you enjoyed the manifest presence of God for a whole 24 hours? I tell you, you can enjoy, enjoy the manifest presence of God all day long, every single day. It's something that has to do with your will because God's commanded it. The more you give yourself the flow in the Holy Ghost, the stronger the flow becomes. The more you self give yourself to the, the manifest presence, the stronger the manifest presence becomes. The more you shut off the things that, that have a demonic influence that runs interference with the anointing. Satan is an antichrist spirit who hates the anointing, whose only purpose is to destroy the anointing. Destroy the anointing. And it comes very subtly. It becomes very subtle. In our lives, it comes, very, comes at us subtly because everybody around us is doing it. So we're going to do it too. Don't be conformed to the world. You're supposed to be conformed to the image of Christ Jesus. You're not supposed to be conformed to the world. You're supposed to be transfiguring. You're supposed to be being transfigured because you're thinking different. You've, do, you've redefined yourself on the basis of what God has defined you to be. You get transfigured. In other words, you light up with the glory of God. Somebody said, oh, God transfigured me. He's telling you to get her done. <laughs> Hi, listen to me. He's telling you to get after it. He's telling you to start thinking different, and you will be transfigured because you're willing to participate. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Did I tell you to go to Colossians? Well, let me show you something over here. I'm just going to start in verse 13. Are you there? Yes. Somebody look up the scripture that I want to talk about in 2 Corinthians chapter 8. While I go over here. See how many people fun function in the word of knowledge. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> just testing you. Uh, a little pop quiz. Praise God. The gifts of spirit are here right now. The gifts of spirit are here right now. The gift and flow and the function of God. The joy is here too. You don't have to miss out on a single thing God's doing in heaven. Heaven's here. Jesus is here. Holy Ghost is here. He's with you and in you. Come on. Come on. Faith activates them. And the Word activates faith. Faith activates them. And the Word activates faith. And the Word said He's with you and in you. That'll activate faith and you'll get excited. And God, the Holy Ghost, be activated. Amen. Amen. And you begin to enjoy his manifest presence and the outworking of his power in your life. So, you know, you got your finger there on Colossians chapter 1? Just kind of hang out at verse 10 for just a minute while I talk to you. Okay? 
The Lord, is, the Lord wants to show us the seed and greatness of his power that was given to us when he raised Christ Jesus from the dead, showed it, seat him at his own right hand in heavenly realm. Far above all principalities, powers, and might, and dominion, every name that is named. Not only in this world, but also in the world to come. And I want you to look down here at verse 16 real quickly. I want you to see, for by, for by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are, on, that are in earth. Visible and invisible. Whether they are thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things, and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body of the church, which is the firstborn. Look, he is the head. I'll just go ahead and read this. I was going to stop. He is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead. That is, that in all things he might have the preeminence. I don't want you to just back up because I want him. I want you to get verse 15. Verse 14. Verse 13. He has delivered us from the power of darkness. Anybody got a problem with darkness? Yeah, yeah well, you can, fleshly lust is coming to war against you. Abstain from fleshly lust is coming to war against you. You don't need to understand how to be strong in the strength of the Lord and the power of his might because you wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual wickedness, against these authorities. You wrestle against these authorities which originally, these thrones and dominions and principalities and powers which were originally created by Christ Jesus who became the firstborn of the creation. The creator became the firstborn of creation. Verse 15, who is the image of the visible God, the firstborn of every creature. Literally, the firstborn of all creation. I, I don't like the King James translation here. Is it because it's a little bit misleading? Firstborn of every creature. No, it's firstborn of all creation. You could translate it firstborn of, of every creature, but the word, the, the Greek word that is used there really is more perfectly defined as creation. It makes more sense. He's the firstborn of all creation. The creator who created everything, he himself became the first, he himself became created. This day have I begotten you. It should be a son of me. Huh? He who, he, 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 he took upon the form of a servant, huh? And became flesh, hmm? Great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifested in the flesh. This day have I begotten. Think about that. Hallelujah. Pretty really amazing, isn't it? Forever, forever and forever, God Almighty, the Eternal One, will have a resurrected human body. Pretty wild. Pretty amazing. That in all things... He might partake and be made like unto the brethren, huh? That he may be able to help us, huh? To show us, as it were, more perfectly how to move in the realms of his divine power and glory. So he gave us everything that pertains to life and godliness because he's called us to walk in his glory and in his purity. You're going to have to break the barriers of the stuff that you've held onto that belongs to a human existence, functioning as mere men. Because God, God himself has made a new race. Yeah. If the church of the Lord Jesus Christ would be functioning as we should be functioning, we would absolutely eliminate, demolish, destroy all racism. Huh? Because we would understand ourselves and define ourselves as God has defined us to be an example and a model and a light to a, a lost and dying world. And they understand, yeah, we might be racist, but they're not. They're sure they've got the cure. Huh? Because God has made a new race of every skin color, of every tribe, of every tongue, of every nation, of every language. Just as he made a new race when he brought Abraham and separated him unto himself. And they became called the Hebrews, the Ihrites. Those who separated unto God ultimately became called those uh, called the Jews. Those the Jewry, the Jews. Hmm? A new race. The body of Christ. The church of the Lord Jesus Christ. The sons and daughters of the Most High God. The heavenly people. The people of the Holy Ghost. Huh? The people, the people of signs and wonders. The people of great exploits who know their God. The people who are kings and priests in the earth today. Not sometime in the, in the future who are, who are a precious treasure unto God. A royal, a holy nation unto God. Thank you. Thank, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I'll redefine you. Huh? People run around trying to figure out what God didn't say. Preoccupied with what God didn't say. Come on, get all consumed with what he did say. Come on, 
stop wondering about what he didn't say. Start understanding, come get yourself caught away in his holy commandments where he's told you and I to exist in him, to be his heirs. He commanded us to do signs and wonders and miracles. He commanded us to be the light unto the world. A city set up on the hill cannot be hid. He commanded us to be filled with joy, to be filled with his love. He didn't call us to just walk in any kind of joy. He called us to walk in joy unspeakable. He called us to walk in any kind of love. He called us to come and walk in the love of Christ, a love that passes all knowledge, a realm in which we are continually filled with the fullness of God. Think about it. I'm going to keep myself over here. I'm going to break the barrier. I understand all the things that are running interference, that are trying to bring hate and offense and, and, and stri strife and division. I understand. I'm not yielding my members to it. I'm going to keep myself over here looking at the author and finisher of my faith. I don't know what everybody else is doing. I can't figure that out. I'm leaving it to him. I'm rejoicing God, my Savior. I'm going to just enjoy letting the rivers of God's presence and glory flow through me. And understand, understand this. The first expression of rivers is tongues. Teaches me how to stop trying to speak after the thinking of men and speak now after the mind of Christ and the mind of the Spirit, the thinking of God, to now walk in the realm of divine authority, the miraculous realm where I walk on water, command mountains, get out of my way, sick of trees to be uprooted and planted in the sea. <laughs> and whatever I say, yeah. and whatever I say, come on. Yeah. I'm not talking. I'm not talking some fringe doctrine. I'm just describing to you what Jesus said, in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, 24. Whatever I say, whatever you say. You know how many times the Lord Jesus said that in in, in John chapter 14. How many times he's repeated it over again? How many times he said it and how he made it the very central feature of John chapter 15? I ordained you and chose you to bring forth a special kind of fruit. Whatever you ask the Father, he'll do it. Whatever you say. Whatever you say. What do you say? What do you say, my son? Put your name there. What do you say, my son, Cade? What do you say, my son, John? What do you say, my son, Scott? What do you say, my son, Brad? Put your name there. What do you say, my daughter, Ruth? What do you say, my daughter, Geneva? What do you say, my daughter, Kristen? What do you say, my daughter, Zoe? Huh? You name the life of God. Zoe to you. Zoe to you. Or Zoe into you. The life in God. Come on, man. You for signs and wonders. If you're not careful, you try to, you just want to have friends. Oh, what else are friends? Friends are overrated. They overrated. They overrated. Friends of this world are talking bad about you the second day. And if everybody knew what every bad, bad thing everybody's saying, no, and, they, and they didn't like people because they said something bad about them, nobody would like anybody. Friends are overrated. God wants to be your friend. Yeah. And he'll set you up with true friends and bring you into a love kind of relationship where you're divinely connected in a fellowship that is a direct result of having fellowship with the Father. It is a true relationship. Come on, people. Yeah. Papa's got everything that he's got for us is what we desire, we desperately want. And he's saying, you've got to come over here for me to be able to give you what I want to give you because it can't be mixed with all that stuff over there. I'm not going to mix with the world. I'm not going to mix with all that lies. I'm not going to mix with all that pretend. I'm not going to mix with all that deceit. You got to come over here. I made a way for you to be in the truth. I made a way for you to be in the light. I made a way for you to walk in this realms of my divine glory. You think about it. Christ Jesus, who created, who made all the dominions and all the principalities that are in the heavenly realms, that he spoiled, by the way. These people try to understand these four different dimensions of the heavenly realm, forget about it. And you understand nothing. Let God teach you. Let God speak to you. Let God reveal these things to you. He's full of principalities and powers. He gave to us the strength of the Lord and the, and the power of his might so that we'd be able to deal with these rulers, with these authorities, with these dominions, with these principalities. With these ancient ones, the archaic. 
the ancient ones, the archaea, the ancient ones. Oh. You think about it. Papa gave to his least little child authority over the prince of darkness. The least little child in the kingdom, authority over the prince of darkness. Why? Because we exist in Jesus. And he's been exalted above all principalities and power and mind of men. He created them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He created them. Give me a break. He created them. Then he subject himself to a creation, subject to himself, took on the form of a servant and made in the likeness of sinful flesh to deliver and to redeem you and I. He became like us so that we may be in fellowship and oneness and union with him. And we want to hang out with them. Are we listening to me? He became flesh. He became like us to redeem us so that we may be in oneness and fellowship with him. And we want to be like them? Give me a break. We're going to be like the world and act like the world so that we can impress the world. Look, that is just the wrong processes of thinking. The world cannot know us. They will be fascinated with us. Even as they cannot know the galaxies and the reaches and the expanses of the universe, they are fascinated by it. They, that is amazing. They can't know us. Either, even any more than they can know him. He will this time that you and I start moving in the splendor of his love. Yeah. We start moving in the splendor of his goodness. Father has ordained that you and I walk in goodness all day tomorrow. The goodness is what passed before Moses and lit his face up. Come on, people. It just get over here in this place. I'm telling you, you're going to start radiating some. I'm going to say talapa. Hallelujah. 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 Sito re moshe i moratanea. I mean, they know gaya. Paul went on Moshepre. Paul said, I speak in tongues more than you all because he understood the expression of the river, the unlimited access that was developed in the realms of of the Spirit as he gave himself to this divine expression. Hallelujah. Which is the declaration that Jesus Christ ascended. It's a declaration that Jesus now, having received the promise of the Father, has poured forth that which you hear. I've never found anybody in the world who has a problem. They think, that's beautiful. What is that? Well, that's my native language. Well, where are you from? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I was just like, I love to tell this story because, you know, I was sitting in a car with, you know, two very famous people, a geneticist and a molecular biologist. And, and I remember they were, we were going out to eat and there was a, a famous person in the, in the front row in science, in the, in the, you know, in the category of science. And I just forgot who I was, where I was, you know. I just, we were going out to eat, and we'd, we'd been driving a, a bit. And I was just looking out the window, and just started to get that off the flow out. And, and, the, and the guy who's a famous geneticist, he said, wow, that's beautiful. He said, what language is that? I said, that's the heavenly one. Of course, that opens up a wonderful door and opportunity to be able to minister Jesus. People, it's religious folks. It's people who are locked down in things that are always resist the Holy Ghost. Got a problem with divine expression. I'm telling you right now, Satan, a man in religion, hates the outpouring of the power of the, of the Lord Jesus Christ and the expression of God, the Holy Ghost, through our lives. It, but it's just about time you go ahead and give yourself to some things that are going to radically change every dimension of the way that you act and think and talk. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on now. Yeah. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. The same in the beginning was with God, and all things were made by Him. Without Him was not anything made or created. Huh? He did it all. Hmm? God, who has sundry times in diverse manners, spoken to the prophets, spoken to the Father, our fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by His Son, who's, whom He has made heir of all things, by whom also He made the worlds. And the one who made the worlds and created all the thrones, huh? all the ancient ones, the archaic, huh? 
Hatori principalities and powers and dominions, has now called you and I to exist in him. In fact, he's displeased if we exist outside of him. He has commanded us to live out his life. People, let everybody else be the scientists and the engineers. <laughs> let everybody else be the doctors and the lawyers. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead, you and I, won't we just go ahead and be the sons of God, the children of the Almighty? Why don't we go ahead and be the heavenly people? Why don't we be the light of the world, the voice of God speaking? into the midst of the darkness. When we go ahead and give ourselves to signs and wonders and miracles, when we go ahead and give ourselves to those things, I mean, you talk about separated. Look at, look, look at Elijah. The hairy guy. The madman who wore a leather girdle. You talk about separated. Come on now. These guys were off in another realm. Think about Abraham. With all of his riches, he could, have been, he could have built a nation. He could have been able, built a great city, put a crown upon his head, and been the king of it all. <laughs> True. He could have. And everybody would have come and made, give, you know, <laughs> given him honor and, 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 and majesty. He said, no, I'm going to dwell in the tent. I'm going to dwell in a tent. I'm going to dwell in a tent. I'm going to be a pilgrim. I'm a sojourner. So Peter picks it up and says, okay, then you be pilgrims and, and sojourners. And abstain from fleshly lust that war against your soul. The war against your life. Father's calling us come and explore the realms of divine power and divine glory that has been given to us. He didn't, he didn't throw a mantle upon us of a prophet. He didn't throw a mantle upon us of a double anointing of someone who had a measure of the authority of God in his life. He gave to us sonship. He threw upon us the mantle, the authority of sonship, not prophet. Somebody said, well, I'm an apostle. And said, I'm a prophet. And then we said, this and that and that. Well, I'm a son. I got you all beat. I'm a son. Your identity is all limited over here in this some little, 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 tiny old thing. <laughs> I'm a son. Hallelujah. I'm a son. You know, hallelujah. Come on now. I'm a son. I'm a son. You son. I'm a child of the living God. Come on. Think about it. Paul's whole life was wrapped up in Galatians chapter, his, his, his thesis of his life, and the thesis of all that he said wrapped up in Galatians chapter 1, verse 15. He said, when God chose to reveal his son in me, when God chose to reveal his son, Christ Jesus, in me, did you know that God has chosen to reveal his son in you? Yes. Hallelujah. Ambrosarina. Hallelujah. Something that cannot happen. Yeah, verse 16, thank you. 116, praise God. God chose to reveal a sign. God chose to reveal a sign. God chose to reveal Jesus in me. God chose to reveal Jesus in you. Everything that Paul wrote in all of his epistles, he conferred not with flesh and blood, but went out into, Saul, into Arabia, and there received, as he's described in Galatians, in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, an abundance of revelation. How God made known unto him the mystery of the fellowship. The mystery of the fellowship. The living God's in me. Christ Jesus dwells in me. God the Holy Ghost is in me. God the Father is in me. So I walk into Cuba and I said, I would like to meet with Fidel Castro because I want to pray for him. So he goes, I don't want to live in heaven without him. And I need to meet with Raul. And they say, okay, we'll set it up and give us a couple months. It's going to happen. 
Why? Because whatever I ask, he's going to do it. When I'm asking about the things of the kingdom, Father's looking for somebody to show his power and his glory and reveal his authority through. He's looking for somebody who just believe him, begin to walk it out with them. Somebody who'll go in the nation and say, look, I'm tearing down the no trespassing sign. I've come to deliver Kashmir from Kashmirians. I've come to bring the I've come to bring the gospel to the Pashtuns, the 40 million Pashtuns. Thank you, Jesus. Azerbaijan is calling. Armenia is calling. Here, Armenia. Here, Armenia is calling. Armenia is calling for one of the sons of God to come and deliver it and to liberate it from the bondage of communism and orthodox religion. It's crying out for one of the sons of God to come and display the power and the glory of Christ Jesus that we've been vested in instead of giving our life to paying our bills. Let God pay your bills. Go bankrupt. Chapter 11. You try to make yourself rich, you think, I'm going to tell you right now, if you were trying to develop wealth and create wealth to advance the kingdom of God, that is the biggest lie and deception. God's laid up the wealth of the wicked to give to the righteous, and he's looking for somebody to stand up and trust him because all God's provision comes by way of miracle to his people, not by the work of our hand or by the strength of the arm of flesh. Cursed is the man who trusts his, trust in the arm of flesh. Come on, people. Where's the full-time students of the Holy Ghost? Where are those who've gone to grammar school in the Holy Ghost? Where are those who've gone to junior high school in the Holy Ghost? Where are those who've gone to high school in the Holy Ghost? Where are those who've gone to college in the Holy Ghost? Where are those who've got some kind of advanced degree in the Holy Ghost? Where is the display of the degrees of Almighty God? Where is the display of these works and greater works? Where is the display of these signs and these wonders. Where is the display of that which God has certified you with in sealing you with the demonstration of the Holy Ghost and power? You start now. You yeah. start now. Yeah. You start now. Yeah. You, st you have to totally abandon yourself of whatever it is you're doing. Get up and leave. Yeah. Where have you been living? Yeah. Hallelujah. 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 The school of the Spirit's calling you. Christ Jesus has called you up and set you in a heavenly realm, far above all principalities and powers of might and dominion. What are you concerned about? Father's given you and I the ability to loose. I, pro went, I, went, I went into Cuba and prophesied. I went into Cuba and prophesied. You know, Cuba's changed. Cuba's radically changed. Cuba's changed in the past two weeks. Oh, that's helping somebody. Keep it changing in the past two weeks. It's true. Keep it being liberated. We're getting ready to go into Cuba and do a massive answer to crusade with 75,000 people in the crusade and Raul and Fidel on the, on the platform. I'm planning on letting Fidel testify. <laughs> Five hand claps, four smiles, three thank you, Jesus, and a and hundred, I can't believe it. What you going to do with this life and authority that God's given you, with the airship that's been given you? Huh? Don't trade it in for no bowl of lentils. With not even any meat in it. <laughs> Shade in the birthright for lentils, no meat. What a cheap sellout. Go and marry unto themselves the daughters of the world. Taking himself a union with the world. When he was first born. The birthright wasn't reckoned unto the firstborn there, nor was Reuben. But with those who grabbed a hold of the things of the Spirit and contended, 
huh? Or with Judah? Even though the mighty prince came forth from Judah, God put it on Joseph, the firstborn of Rachel. Huh? Somebody who contended for a relationship with God to function in the authority and the mantle of the things of the Spirit. What do you want? Tonight, what is it that you desire? God's calling you. Yeah. Will you sit there for so a long time, such a long time, believing the gospel of you? Reading your own Bible that you wrote about yourself? Or will you believe what God said, the Bible he wrote? Yeah. Yeah. The gospel that was brought down to us from heaven by the Holy Ghost. What will you believe? Dambrositi. What will you believe tonight? I command change in your life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. The nations are calling. A lost and dying world around you right now here in San Diego, in Southern California. What's it? I'll tell you right now, you take Southern California, it's all downhill from there. <laughs> if, there if there's any place that I would define as the seat of Satan, it'd be here. Jesus. And it's just like him. Yeah, Trying to come take over some place where there's been great moves of God. and occupy such influence over men through what's broadcasted from Hollywood through the media that some of you taken prisoner by. Just can't wait for that next movie to come out, huh? Just sitting on pins and needles. <laughs> so addicted. Living from movie to movie. <laughs> What was called is to live from glory to glory. Amen. Unfortunately, I'm, unfortunately, what I'm telling you is true. I just, some of you look at me amazed. Others of you are bowing your head because you feel shame. <laughs> Come on now. Come on now. Well, now the Congo, the entire Congo is open. I was just with the emperor of the Congo, prophesying the emperor of the Republic of the Congo. And he's calling for missionaries to come fill the Congo. The darkest continent on the planet was defined by the Congo, the Republic of the Congo. And, and, and there, the emperor, the king of kings of the Congo, over the kings of Zambia as well, and much of Angola, when he, when he speaks, they all bow. When he's there, they all bow. He says, come. Come and reveal Jesus to my nation. Let me do one great last thing for my nation. And you don't know what to do. You can't see that the harvest is plenteous. You're busy with, what was that? What was that? You're busy with. What was that? Right now, the Barrio Logan is calling. Right now. The Logan Heights is calling. The Paradise Hills is calling. Right now. There's tens of thousands of children that could be rescued right over here. And if somebody would go to them, they won't end up in prison. They won't end up in the darkness. They won't end up dead by the time they're 15 years old. Another statistic. Raped by the time they're 12. What are you busy doing? What was that? What was that you doing? You got a placard for abortion? How about the living? How about the living? Father's going to take care of those who shed innocent blood. You believe it. He's, you don't overlook that. It's an unforgivable breach, believe you me. How about the living? 
He was so distracted doing their own thing. They're not under divine order. They don't know how to be submitted to authorities. Hmm? And they wonder why they can't execute the sonship power and ability that God has given us. Come on, people. Let's just go ahead. Do what God said to do. Submit ourselves to the laws of the spirit of life, the spiritual laws of life. So translate it either way. And begin to learn what God, the Holy Ghost, wants to teach us. How to function as heirs and co-inheritors with Christ Jesus. How to bind. I'll give you the keys to the kingdom. You know, somebody said, well, the Lord said that to Peter. Yeah, he did. Matthew 16. In Matthew 18, he said it to the whole church. He said it to the individuals in the church. He repeated it. And not just for Peter. It's for the church. It's for you and for me. It's an authority to whatever we bind on earth should be found. If the church was moving in authority, if you weren't moving under the authority, the divine governance, the divine principles, there wouldn't be an abortion. We'd shut that down by the anointing. Father doesn't care if he saves by few or by many. And he prefers few. Father's just looking for a church. Some people, doesn't, I mean, he, in Wells one day, in, in Wells in, in 1904, he found a, a company of people of about 16, 17 folks, and he changed the nations of the earth because they'd given themselves to seeking God. And if you would have looked on it, they thought, well, these, these guys aren't doing much. A little small church. Here they are crying out to God. But their hearts became so submitted to the divine principles and the ways of the Father. The Spirit of the Lord was able to see the perfect sacrifice and that's where he sends his fire. And the world was changed. The world was changed. 1904 marks a change in the world. Hold on to your own identity. Hold on to yourself. Argue with God. Try to think through things with your own intellect. And you'll be stuck in the same ditch you're in right now for the rest of your life. True. Throw up your hands and surrender to God in total abandonment to be now taught to think like God by obeying His Word. Hallelujah. 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 Get yourself in divine assignment. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, the presence of Jesus is here right now. Oh, the presence of the living God is here right now. Oh, sonship authority is here right now. Oh, the great outpourings of God are here right now. Hallelujah. 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 Right now, there is 114 separate zip codes in San Diego County. 114 separate communities. I'm going to go pick up a 5,000 square foot tent and dare somebody to believe God. I'm going to go pick up a 5,000 square foot tent and see if anybody can move in enough faith to set it up in this, this, this place called San Diego County that says that they have a gag order on the gospel and a lockdown on where you can preach Jesus. Come on, people. Come on now. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. See, some people start taking it to the mat, start fasting and praying, crying out Amen. to God. Yeah. Some people who know how to touch heaven. Hallelujah. <laughs> not, into, not through your own, not through your own, you know, <laughs> not through your own, you know, frustration or being overwhelmed or through your own strength, but learning how to touch heaven to where the power of God begins to flow out of you and the refreshing of the anointing, refreshing flow of the anointing begins to overwhelm you. And then you begin to speak by the Spirit. Hallelujah. And things begin to change in the atmosphere. Oh, Because you discover that you in charge, that you his mouthpiece. Hallelujah. That God who's now spoken to us by his son is speaking through you. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And then everybody stand with me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You were born again to be a son. You're born again to be an heir and a co-inheritor with God. You're born again. 
to reveal Christ Jesus. You're born again to walk in the Spirit. You're born again to be a heavenly person. You're born again to go and deliver a world who's entangled by the powers of darkness, to go everywhere and destroy everything that Satan is doing. Amen. You're not going to be able to do that if you're entangled or ensnared by what? Tricks he's playing by the devices that he's using. None of us are necessarily only come in the realms of the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and pride of life. It also comes being ensnared with doubt and unbelief. Being overwhelmed by those things that you believe within the framework of what men say, what you say. It's time, trying to, time to start living by what God said. So you let the wellspring spring. You let the rivers of God begin to flow through you. You make decisions right now about how you're going to live your life. The nations are calling. The lost are calling. 114 zip codes calling. The nations of the world are gathered together right now here in San Diego. Come on. You gonna stand up there and just smile? The nations of the, the nations of the world are gathered here in San Diego right now. It's July, fourth of July. I wish I had the leisure you guys have. Because I can't walk down the beach and not get one word of knowledge after the next, after the next, after the next, after the next. Go walk through the go walk through the Go walk to the fairgrounds. Just walk, forget about the, the rides and the little ponies and the cotton candy and the, and the turkey legs. <laughs> Just walk around. Being there on divine assignment, you don't try. The harder you try, the less, the less is going to happen. You listen to me. I watch me. They try so hard. They come under the pressure of men. Forget about it. Ain't nothing going to happen. Just walk out and just, just be in God. Just be in Him. You get one word of knowledge after the next word of knowledge. The word of knowledge is supposed to be working out there. People's lives will be transformed, changed by His power. It's time you stop living your life. It's time you start finding a place of communion and fellowship with Him, eating His flesh and drinking His blood. It's time. I wanted to have communion with you tonight. Somebody who's going to serve us, going to have to serve the table. Amen. Serve the table of the Lord. Eat his flesh and drink his blood. A. Eat his flesh and drink his blood. Dwell in him. Fellowship with him. Lay hold on God. Lay hold on him. He's... He's not far away. He's right here. Lay hold on him. Quit defining him in your religious categories. Quit filing him in your cabinets of understanding. Lay hold on God now. Come on, lay hold on God now. Lay hold on him. I see one, two, three people back there responding. Lay hold on God. Lay hold on God. You lay hold on God. Lay hold on him. He's looking for somebody to lay hold on him. Father's looking for somebody to lay hold on him. Father's looking for somebody to believe him. Father's looking for somebody to quit relying upon themselves and their understanding of who they are after the natural. Trying to please men. Father's looking for somebody to speak on his behalf, to act on his behalf. Jesus, Jesus was called to the lost house of Israel and sent you and I to the nations. 
I said Jesus was called the lost house of Israel to one nation, sent you and I to all the nations. Hallelujah. Azerbaijan's calling right now. Georgia's calling right now. Kyrgyzstan is calling right now at this very moment. At the, right now. You can't turn a deaf ear. Venezuela is calling. It's in bondage. Venezuela is in bondage. It's calling right now. Nicaragua is calling right now. It's calling. Sons of God, come liberate us. Come liberate us. Come prophesy. Come prophesy. Come prophesy. I'll tell you something. It does not take much to see. It does not take much perception to see that God has opened up those nations who have been imprisoned right now. As I was standing prophesying to the king of Congo, I said there is no way, no way that your nation is going to change. You're going, your nation is going to continue in upheaval. Until, the, the time will never be right. The time will, you'll never be ready. You've got to right now allow the Spirit of God to move by allowing prophets to come and prophesy over your nation and declare the Word of God. Right at this very moment. Right at this very moment. Anybody who wants to go to Cuba as a missionary, you can go right now. You can go right now. You can go right now. Right now. Kashmir, right now. Azerbaijan, right now. Some of you I see, you're going. You're ready. Others of you, you just want to just say, well, we're going to support you to go. Well, you better raise up some serious support. It's going to take a whole lot of money to represent your absence. You understand what I'm telling you? If you're not busy in the nations of the earth, you better get busy right here in the city. And quit pretending. Quit pretending. Get busy. So, oh, well, we like to rest on Friday night. You get yourself busy. Oh, but we like to rest on Saturday. You get busy on Saturdays. The increase of the anointing and the expression of the glory of God comes as a result of your willingness to go. That's it. Just go. Do it. Just do it. I know that whoever I lay my hands on, they will recover. I know it. And you know, there's people all over that know that I know it. And that's why I get called those people say, well, I'm going to come, we're going to come and we're going to bring this person, we're going to bring, they just come into town just, just, to, just to visit for a day, to be with somebody who knows it. And it's time that, it's time that, the, that this stuff of the few doing the work of the many comes to an end. Does anybody know that you know it? That you know that whatever you ask, God will do. Yes. That, that knows that you know that when you lay hands on the sick, they shall recover. Does anyone know? If they get sick, do they immediately say, hey, call you? Because they know that you know. Because they see the movings of God and the faith of God released through your life. Get busy.
Hallelujah. 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 God is not giving you the spirit of fear. Some bondage to fear. Some self-consciousness to fear. He's giving you the authority of sonship. He's giving you the boldness of the Holy Ghost. Yes. You know what I believe that God would do for you tonight? I believe that God would give you such a boldness that you're not intimidated or ashamed or threatened anymore. That you don't have a problem looking in people's eyes and allowing the gushings of God's love to flow out of you right Amen. into them. Yes. People are so intimidated, so under the realms of fear, our eyes are darting all around. can't look steadfastly at anybody in the face because you're overwhelmed with self-consciousness about what people think about you I'm gonna break that fear now in Jesus name Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Listen, a man is not what you need in your life. God's what you need. A woman is not what you need in your life. A husband or a wife is not what you need in your life. People get boyfriends and girlfriends so they can practice being divorced. Then they give themselves to the spirit of divorce, break up with one good and another. I'm going, I'm just telling you right now. I know how the demons play their games. Your foul spirit of sickness, I command you to go out of that body. In Jesus' name. Tonight, think about it. How many of you living under the yoke of men and justifying it? God's called you to live under His yoke. He's called you to live under His yoke. Don't make an excuse. Say, Lord, shine the floodlight of heaven upon me. Lead me in the way everlasting. Show, Lord, if there's any false way in me. Lead me in the way everlasting. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Arabo su ki prevedeste. Yureva su namate sine. 
the fire and the power of the Holy Ghost is here present right now to embolden you, to anoint you, to give you insight and wisdom right now at this very moment. Somebody said, I'm looking for direction from heaven. I got your direction. Go. Hallelujah. <laughs> If you hang on to your life, you can't live his. And this is the only overcoming power that overcomes the world, even our faith, which is living Christ, the life of Christ Jesus. The Lord is saying, who will go for us? The Lord says, who will go for us? The Lord says, who will go for us? The Lord is saying, who will go for us? The Lord is saying, who will go for us? The Lord is saying, who will go for us? The Lord is saying, who will go for us? Watch me. The Lord is saying, who will go for us? The Lord is saying, who will go for us? You know, the Lord gave me an insight on how to take nations. Just to go to the governments and the powers and the authorities and say, we're here to bless you. And I believe that'll work on any individual. It works for me when I minister to individuals. The Lord wants to put you on divine assignment tonight so that tomorrow you will leave all that you've been and all that you've done and all that's preoccupied your life and go into the full-time ministry. That those of you who are in a workplace and got a job, it's about the kingdom of God. Whatever it is that you're doing becomes about the kingdom of God. And if it can be about the kingdom of God, then you leave it. You know, when we speak, I, I recognize that people are constantly reinterpreting through their own experience what we're saying. And I want you to hear it tonight just like Jesus did it, like he said it. I don't want you to reinterpret it based upon the way that you try to fit God into your life.
I want you to receive power right now to fully represent Christ Jesus when you walk out of this place. And all you have to do is want it with all that is within your heart. All you have to do is want this with all. All you got to do is want this more than the lust of the flesh, more than the lust of the eye, more than the pride of life, more than, more than the cares of this life, more than the deceitfulness of riches, more than the pleasures that are in this world, more than what you shall eat, more than what you shall wear, more than all your stuff. If you had begin to just start praying this prayer, Lord, send me into the harvest because I know the laborers are few. Would you just ask him right now, say, Lord, send me into the harvest. Because I know the laborers are few. Why don't you just come present yourself to the Lord of Pure? begin to get desperate inside and say, Lord, I want to be a part of the kingdom. I want to see souls come into the kingdom. I want to see, listen to me, listen to me. Because you can't just keep saying, yes, Lord. At some point, you got to go and you got to do it. It's good that you're saying yes, but someplace you got to break off and do it. It's a great yes, Lord. Just begin to say, Lord, I want to, I want to see your works be manifested through my life. I'm going to stop being so entertained. Hey, I want you to just turn off the, I want you to just turn the program off and come up here. I don't want, come up here. We really don't need you back there. It ain't helping out any, to tell you the truth. Just come on up here. You can, you can help out. Just come up here. Just come on up here. Let the power of God touch you. Get hungry for God. Get hungry for the things of the Spirit. It's a divine opportunity, you see. It's a divine opportunity. It, and, and, and the Lord's commanding you to do amazing things things he's commanding you to walk in his authority and his glory and his divine power he's commanding you to live his life wow. is there anyone here tonight that will just begin to do it is there anyone here tonight that just will begin to become so hungry God listen God will multiply you he will multiply you overnight Father is looking for you to begin to do the work of the ministry in San Diego. And yeah. that results in souls coming into the kingdom. Because if you're doing some work in San Diego that's not resulting in souls coming into the kingdom, that's not the work God wants you to do. You're off track. God has purposed that you be fruitful and that you multiply. Yeah. I mean, how long have you been praying for Tiffany? Five, six years. 
Six years. How many times have you been invited to church? Hundreds of times. Today she gave her life to Jesus. Today she had an encounter with the Lord. Because somebody's not going to quit. Somebody's not going to stop. But just, what are you, what if that was going on with you with, with ten people? And what will begin to happen as you begin to labor for the lost, as you begin to want to be used by God to function in the authority of a sonship, to break the power, mind-blinding spirits, and the stronghold of demons, and the effect of the power of darkness of the people. Suddenly you begin to get wisdom and insight on how to take whole zip codes. It's like 114 nations. Imagine whole zip codes. 114. Which zip code you taking? No, it's got to be born in the yeah. fire of, this, of yes. prayer. It's got to be born in the fire of fellowship and relationship. And if it's not born, it's because you haven't started. I think that a lot of times people's relationship with God is all about me. It's an all about me relationship. And praise God if you'll stay with it and mature in God's love and kindness for you to where it becomes all about Him. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. And then... And then, and then, and then, it becomes all about them. Because that's what he's about. He's all about them. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. He wants to give you two. People, I'm sorry, but I'm not, gonna, I'm not around much. Because the Lord said to me that this nation as well as other nations. It's about time you used to rise up and start moving. Yeah. Yes. He wants to sit around and theorize. Dry lab it. <laughs> oh, let's do another study. No, let's not. <laughs> you got enough gospel yeah. to change the entire world. Yes. Yes. Let's go do something with it. Yes. If anything, if anything, let's have a prayer meeting. If any man, let's have a Holy Ghost meeting. Yeah. Let's sit around and study the scripture that you studied over and again. <laughs> to do nothing with it as you've done before. No. I'm not, come on. Somebody said, oh, well, I want to talk about uh, demonology. <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? All the demonology you need to know is he gave you all authority against unclean spirits. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> all the demonology that you need to know. It said, these signs shall follow them that believe in my name, you'll cast out devils. That's all demonology you need to know. <laughs> that all demons are subject to you through his name. <laughs> you know how, you know, I love how God showed how easy this is. Somebody that wasn't even authorized. They weren't even authorized. They just saw one of the disciples casting out a devil in his name, started doing the same thing and having great success, and John saw him and forbid him and said, you can't do that. Well, he was doing it. He said, you can't, you're not following us, you're not authorized. He goes to Jesus and complains about somebody moving in on their territory, casting out devils, and the Lord Jesus said, no, no, you leave them alone because nobody can cast out devils in my name and speak evil against me. They're just trying to help us understand how easy this is. <laughs> how about that? The only thing that holds a person back from giving their life to Jesus and having the outpouring of God, the Holy Ghost, upon their life is demon power. Father yeah. wants you to come over and be separate unto him. Come on into a place that... All of these great company of witnesses to cry, to cry out and say, this realm really does exist, so he can show you how this, how this works. Many people have been enjoying the presence of the Lord, living lives of disobedience. Imagine what it's like when you start living a life of obedience. Imagine when you begin to partner with God in the place that you say, Father, I'm just not going to do anything except for that which pleases you. Yeah. Because you've not made this out of my reach. 
You've not made this something that goes beyond my abilities, but you've filled me with divine power and ability. Could you just imagine that all of a sudden you're not interested in me like anybody else in the world. You're just interested in me like Jesus. Amen. And what you discover and the impact you have upon the world because everybody's looking for something different. Huh? Just looking for something different. So I life of God. Clara, the life of God. Then one thing in the Holy Ghost. Patty, the life of God. Deborah. 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 Yeah. Prophesy. Yeah. You prophesy. Yeah. Deborah. Deborah. Sarah moving in signs and wonders and miracles. Tonight, Father, would remove you from the place of being imprisoned to what men think and to be captivated with what he thinks. To be non-responsive to the words of men and fully captivated by the word of Christ Jesus. What will you do? What will you do with Jesus? Some of you, the only way that you're going to get a breakthrough is to get up and go. You're going to, the only way you're going to ever may begin to move out in God is to get up and leave and go to the foreign field. Because there's too many distractions, there's too many holds on you in this world. Here in San Diego, you wouldn't be able to go to a zip code. You're too held into the prison of your home and life. You got to break free. Many of you here tonight, the Lord's just calling you right where you are, right at this moment in time, right with what you know, right now with the authority of God that is in your life. Right now. To move in the example that he gave. To do what he does. To see a demon spirit cast it out, see sickness, commanded to leave. To see people hurting. See this little person said, boy, is that ever an opportunity? <laughs> hey, let me talk to you. The call of God is upon your life. Let's think about a word of knowledge. It won't leave you alone. You go to play golf. You see somebody. Hey, why are you running from God? <laughs> you know, this, this is, come on now. It is such a, it is such so much fun to speak on Father's behalf right into the circumstance and reality of people's lives. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I don't want anybody in this place to miss out on the privilege of being overwhelmed by His glory tomorrow morning. To being so overwhelmed by His power and His glory that you can't even hardly stand. When you go to prayer, you try to get yourself in line to the bed because if you don't fall out, you won't fall out on your because of good because you're going down. You're going down. Power God's about to fall and you're going down. You know, sometimes you just go ahead and get on down there, get ready. Because you're out already, you know, you're going. 
presence of the Lord is so strong. This is the place where you no longer thirst for the world. This is the place where you so feel you have no interest in anything that the devil is selling. The anointing becomes so sacred, so wonderful to you, you would not do anything to possibly jeopardize it. You're so desperate for more, you don't want anything <laughs> to diminish what you already have. Hallelujah. Aroma sete. Haneke is sepulti is she. Step beyond the realms of what men think. Step beyond the realms of what men think. You know, there's so many times I, where I go different places, I got real people pulling on me. They so need approval from men. They've not been validated. They haven't had approval. And there's no problem to bless people, give them approval. But it's an insatiable lust that cannot be quenched. And if I do my job, I'm telling your heart from needing the approval of men to basking in the approval of the Father. Because <laughs> when you got it from Him, you're, do, you're good. You're good. You're good. You're good. So I need an idea that it was just all over here. Spirit of the Lord is all over here. Hallelujah. I'm the see old, I can see old Harry Elijah. <laughs> All eyebrows, you know. <laughs> Looking at this generation saying, let me in the fight. I can see, I can see him right now. I can, I see, I, I can see Enoch saying, my goodness, where is anybody got it going on? Lord, send me into the right, send me in there right now. I promise you that if Enoch showed up, he won't be looking for a job. He won't be concerned about getting a house and a car. He won't be concerned about no car. He won't be concerned about no airplane. Because he broke the barrier. He broke the barrier. He stepped into the realm. He stepped into the realm of the unseen. He stepped into the realms of the spirit, which is the same as the realms of the heavenly. Leslie, the Lord has purposed to give you many souls. His purpose revealed itself through you. Don't struggle with the things that are opposing you. Don't struggle with them. Give him over to the Lord. It's, it's so, listen to me very carefully, listen to me very carefully. It's so easy to 
to try to take up the arm of flesh to bring to pass the will of the Father. But I ain't going to work for you. You can just humble yourself by the mighty hand of God. You just cast your care upon Him. He's been to give your heart of affection to Him. Jesus. 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 <laughs> Jesus. Brusina ma Ikea. Brusina ma Ikea. Jesus. Listen to me. Come here. The Lord doesn't want you to hang on your life. He doesn't. I know you know, but he's, the complication is not doing it, isn't it? Jesus. You've raised three Holy Ghost crows. You've done a good job. Jesus. Take a remo shake a tano mutina. Boramo no shake a nabakati. Tito lomo no sino mo pro. He said, <laughs> You start doing what God wants you to do instead of what's convenient for you. And watch what he do. The many times we get in a place where God wants to use us, we're right there and all of a sudden opposing things start coming up. It ain't convenient for us, so we bail out. And that was right there in the moment. God was going to form us and shape us. It was going to be a breakthrough. We find ourselves being so useful in the kingdom. Amen. 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 Now faith begins to work. Now faith begins to work. Now the word begins to work. When the word begins to work, faith begins to work. When you begin to obey God's word with total abandonment, suddenly behold faith. Lo. Lo, and behold, faith. Lo, and behold, the supernatural workings of the power of God surrounding you. <laughs> These are the mics that they got set up for me here. Seperonase. <laughs> Seperonase. Seperonase. This is my, you got to think different, Holt, right here. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Sir, so come over here and get bold in the faith. I've worn her out. Traveling all over the place, all over the world. Get him off Chitalade. Now, now, now in Jesus' name, uh, now, now, change tonight, change now, hallelujah. Now, boko rapana ishe pora petina la manga lo po ishe pana mea. On divine assignment from heaven now in Jesus' name. I pora ma shekai on divine moshili on divine. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The fire and glory of heaven. Right there, beside you, all you got to do is respond to him. He's right there with you, just respond to him. Just respond to him. Sit your hands towards him, just 
Just respond to him. Just respond. Respond. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you for the anointing. Signs, wonders, and miracles. Just do them. You just do them. You just do them. You just do them. You just do them. Just lift your hands. You lift your hands towards heaven. She doesn't need help. I appreciate you wanting to help. You never try to catch somebody by the arm. Anyways. Signs, wonders, and miracles. It's good that you want to get right in the middle of things. It's good. But Father, I want you to get right in the middle of his things. <laughs> right now, in Jesus' name. Right now, in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Now in Jesus' name. Let there be a softness and a sensitivity in your spirit to heaven. Let there be a softness. Now in Jesus' name. You can't live for, live for your own leisure. And for your own luxury. And for your own pleasure. Because if you find your life in this world, you shall lose it. I don't care how much you go to church. Father's called you to lay down your life. Father's called you to wear yourself out in the kingdom. God's called you to the sufferings of Christ. To wear yourself out in the kingdom. Not for another holiday. Huh. I had a half a day off in Japan. The preacher telling me I had a holiday. Now in Jesus' name, you know, let me just tell you, it may be that the, those barriers that I'm talking about between you and the realms of the supernatural is simply be, you begin to break them just because you're not stopped and paralyzed by fear. What am I going to say? How are they going to react? If I do say something, it's a prison of the mind. It's a prison of the mind. God wants to anoint you with the Holy Ghost and fire tonight so that you won't rely upon what you think anymore. You just begin to walk over in the realms of the things of delighting yourself in the Lord and it's just a download. It's a continual download from heaven. Hallelujah. You know, if, if I wake up in the morning and I don't have the flow of the Holy Ghost, I'm concerned about what's going on in myself. And I say, Holy Spirit, forgive me, whatever it is. Father, strengthen me, whatever it is. Whatever hindrance is, get out of the way. I want to flow. But you know what? If I'm around people and I don't have a compassion for the lost, I know there's something even more wrong with me. If I'm not compelled to compel them, there's something seriously wrong with me. I just let, just let God give me a checkup. Let God give you a checkup. Let God give you a checkup tonight. Because there's people in the church today that can walk by hundreds of people and never one moment, never one time be drawn to the lost. Just pass them by, pass them by, pass them by. Just let the Lord Jesus live in you. Let him live. I said, let him live. You don't have to struggle with it. You don't have to try to talk him into it. He's trying to talk you into it. Let him live. Let him live by simple obedience. Just let him live. You let him live. You let him live.
Right now in Jesus' name, right through your heart, through your life. In the name of Jesus, Christ of Nazareth. Liberated by the Spirit of the Lord, receive all those things that are freely given to you by Him. Can't you just hear him say, come live your life in me? Can you just hear Jesus calling? What a wonderful, an amazing. He never told Jeremiah that. He said, Jeremiah, put my words in your mouth. Today is tells us come live our life in him huh huh Lord, take hold. Giuseppe's life. Take hold of Giuseppe's life. God baptize you in the Holy Ghost and fire. Let him baptize you in his glory. You know, people, we're real awkward until we let God take over. I've never met a human being that is not completely weird. But when God takes over, all that weirdness goes away. And his majesty and glory begins to be made manifest. People spend all their life trying, trying not to be weird. And God, the Holy Ghost, could change it for you in a second. It just changed it for you. So now you're not living under the yoke of some personality that you inherited genetically. You're with me here. I mean, you think about Wigglesworth. He was just weird. And he had an encounter with the Holy Ghost. And all of his shyness and all of his intimidation and all the weirdness left him. And he became a great instrument of the power of God. In the name of Jesus now. In the name of Jesus now. In the name of Jesus now. The Spirit of the Lord. The power of His 
life and of His glory begins to be manifested through you. Hallelujah. So, both take a in this day. Man, blend them like single poster. Men ben brede es de sitte de bat. Bra rasas. Jesus. <laughs> Oh, the Holy Ghost just wants to touch you. You don't have to try too hard. He just wants to touch you. He wants to touch you. He wants to touch you. Deep in your emotions. He wants to touch you. He wants to touch you. He wants to make you joyful and happy. He really does. He wants to touch you. Why don't you just let him touch you? Why don't you let the Lord touch you? Why don't you let the Lord touch you? I tell people, let the Lord, Lord touch you. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't you, don't you let the Lord touch you? Amen. Hallelujah. Just, just let him touch you. Just let him touch you. Just let him love you. Let him love on you. Let him overwhelm you. Let him overwhelm you. Let him overwhelm me now. <laughs> Let him overwhelm me. <laughs> the Lord will come and overwhelm you in such a way that nothing else even matters anymore. And you just kind of live your life like, oh, come touch me once again. <laughs> Guess what you get to do? You get to go from glory to glory. <laughs> you, get to get, you get to live your life in ever increasing manifestation of the glory and power of God in your life. What a privilege. So much. Papa loves you so much. He loves you so much. <laughs> bless. I bless you right now. I bless you right now in Jesus' name. 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 It's not hard to receive from Him when your whole life is directed towards Him, just consumed by Him. If you somehow feel like that there's something between you and Him, you know it stands as a barrier. Did you know that? Did you know that? It stands as a barrier. I'm no barrier there. 
Kamakea Shiparana. Ha 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 right there. Mrs. Mrs. Sheesh. Mrs. Sheesh. <laughs> Hallelujah. Bodhisatta. Bukalea. Manadea. Manadeshtahaya. Hallelujah. Bokarana. Belashe. Bokade. Rafatana. Maladeo. Maladeo Bustade. Adabeshtu. Hallelujah. Motorze. Mayanea. Poyanea. Uh. A mighty wind of the Holy Ghost. A mighty wind of the Spirit of God. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> 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 Who <laughs> 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 Maheshaya. <laughs> oh, Madhan, Mahanamaya, Harrasta, Ufram and Ham, Ufram and Mahan, May Precision. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Sarinaya. Usi Saranaya Ma. Ha 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 ha. Oh, He loves you so much. Somebody said, how much will he use me? As much as you allow him to use you. <laughs> Can you imagine tonight that heaven wants to take hold of your life? That God wants to set you up for an encounter with Him that redefines every way that you think, every way that you act, the way you move in faith. He's here. Christ Jesus is here. What do you want? Huh? Jesus. Jesus. I guess Satan. He must. And the crown is so you feet. Take hold of that which Jesus Christ purchased for you to have. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. Holy Ghost. E toro si king le bapova, mi eti ki homo o king. Mundam bro pesifis. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. 
Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Father, I just ask you to bless Martha in a super special way. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. How are you? In pain? No, I'm keeping my shirt down. Are you keeping your shirt down? <laughs> How are you? I'm doing good. That's awesome. Father, we thank you for supernatural faith and faith. Thank you, mighty God. No. <laughs> <laughs> Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that everything about your servant's life will be ex the expression of what she will be when she steps over into the realms of glory in heaven. There will be no difference, no distinction between the two. Signs and wonders and miracles. Signs and wonders and miracles. Signs and wonders yes. and miracles. God command. <laughs> ah! God commands it. He commands it. Pa Messiah. He commands it. He commands it. Signs, wonders, and miracles. That's what he commands. Hallelujah. Ah! She pa. She pokataya. Maya Shiti. A robo, Mithia, Mithia, <laughs> Suta, <laughs> Ile Mondea, <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Ah! 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 Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Great exploits. Great exploits. Great exploits of faith. Great exploits of power. Great exploits of grace. Great is the Lord in the midst of you. Great is, great is the Lord in the midst of you. Great is the Lord in the midst of you. Mighty is the Lord in the midst of you. Suradani <laughs> Ikeata. Eyes open to see, ears open to hear, heart with the ability to understand. Hallelujah. Kateri Satalebea. Woohoo! Yippee! Hot dog! Halaseka, it do remind the lay sheep of Gouda Maya, Mom Lay Jesse's. Fire God right now. Fire God on you right now. Fire God on you right now. Fire God on you right now. Fire God, fire God on you. Fire. Fire. See fire bottom. Fire God. Say if I. Menashe. 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 Jesus. 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 Now. Now in Jesus' name. Every yoke broken now in Jesus' name. Every burden now. Untied from off you in Jesus' name. No 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 pritarm spoppa exti prenoma et stutoi masapa. No Jesus. Liberate it. Liberate it. Liberate it. Clean hands and a pure heart. I paint you with the blood of Jesus Christ right now. And no more bondage. It was with him. It's wonderful to be healed, isn't it? <laughs> Hallelujah. It's wonderful to, be, wonderful to be free from disease, isn't it? Huh? Yes. Isn't it the glory? It's the same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead <laughs> dwells in your mortal body, it makes a life. It's an amazing. The same power that was there in the midst of the death and burial and ascension of Christ Jesus down into hell. It raised him up from the dead. It's right there, same Holy Ghost. Same Holy Ghost. Same Holy Ghost. Same Holy Ghost. Yeah, give me the baby. Jesus. Jesus, touch baby. Touch baby. Touch baby. Touch little brother. Touch little brother. Hallelujah. Touch little brother right now. Poke around my say to you. Touch little brother right now, Lord Jesus. Oh, Bidama. 
Esi mahatei. Aleluia. Oh, the joy of the Lord is little brother strength. Jesus. In his mother's strength. <laughs> Somebody said, can you teach me how to raise kids? No problem. Praise more. <laughs> Praise and thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Put your hands towards heaven. Huh? The Lord says don't be downcast. Huh? He says, but rather be strengthened. He says, rather be renewed and be refreshed continually. He says, be blessed. God says he wants you to be blessed. He says he'd like to provide for you. <laughs> huh? <laughs> hey, great signs and wonders and miracles, and to display the power of God through your life. As you stand speaking and preaching, declaring the good things of God, the Spirit of the Lord is manifested and revealed to break off sickness and disease. Set the captives free to open up the prison doors to do great and extraordinary miracles. Hallelujah. <laughs> Come on, tell ya. Come on, tell ya. <laughs> ha. Let the fire of the Holy Ghost begin to burn in you. Let the glory of heaven begin to burn on your life. I'm going to say every night. It's the other day. It's not hard. Papa's commanded it. Papa's commanded it. Here, let mom see how she does now. Be careful, there's people behind you. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> it's good. Yeah, pin you up against the wall. <laughs> Are you not here? Here, let the healing waters flow from the depths of your soul. The healing waters flow. I hear it. I hear Father saying, you let it. I'd be all afraid. Oh, God, do this through me. Oh, God, do that through me. Oh, God, wake up. He's saying, you let me do that through you. let me. You wake up. Lord, touch my baby. This is my baby. You have to preach more. You got to preach more. Signs and wonders and miracles. 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 God's commanding it to be the great display of His authority. Signs and wonders and miracles. Jesus. <laughs> Uh, signs and wonders and miracles. Whew. 
Do you notice that when Elizabeth preaches, she smiles the whole time? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now you be strong in faith. Now you be very courageous. Now in Jesus' mighty name, I call forth the outpouring of his joy and his rejoicing through you. There be as a, a protecting shield about you. Mm, there's a cloud of glory around you. Mm. There's an impenetrable defense of the Lord. In Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, I first read how that after Philip had gone into Samaria and preached Jesus, great signs and wonders which he did, you know, and the Lord took him in, out into the desert to hook up with this Ethiopian, you know. Then as Ethiopian was baptized and went down in the water, God carried Philip away into Joppa. And then he went into Caesarea. Then many years later you hear there's a great central hub where all the mighty men of God are coming to, you know, Caesarea to Philip's house where he had four daughters who prophesied. He went to Caesarea after that great revival, set up a Holy Ghost camp. When I read that, I said, Papa, I want my daughters <laughs> to prophesy. So by the time they're little babies, we kept them in the camp in the midst of signs and wonders and miracles, in the midst of the men of, and the women of God. Hmm. Thank you, Jesus. You do the same. But look at this. <laughs> Two Holy Ghost women here. If you're going to raise children, you might as well raise them right, eh? Amen. Prophetess and prophets. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Behold, I and the children which the Lord has given me. The signs and wonders. So, Mr. That's Jesus. Yeah, that's right. And we got his ministry, and we and him, and his life is our life, and we only do what he's doing, and whatever he does, we do. And the cup that he drinks, we drink. And the baptism we're with, he is baptized, we are baptized too. <laughs> Come on, man. Come on, people. Now, Father, we just speak. The baby Ezekiel. <laughs> Lord, we don't understand how you could possibly do three more months here. <laughs> Two and a half. Two and a half. <laughs> Two months, 17 days, four, four hours, 32 minutes. Ezekiel. Ezekiel. Hear the word of the Lord. Ezekiel. Be filled with the Holy Ghost. Yes. Ezekiel, yes. be filled with the Spirit. Yes. The hearing, the seeing, the understanding. Zapukuma. Zapukuma. Hallelujah. Uraba. Who? And Ezekiel's on his way. Hallelujah. God's raising up a mighty generation of prophets. Signs and wonders and miracles. He's jumping. He's jumping. He's jumping. He's leaping. Hallelujah. We're getting a result. Hallelujah. I'm jumping, leaping, dude. <laughs> Oh, God. 
that there would be people of the Spirit in this day and now, oh God, to be able to see as Ezekiel saw, to behold your glory, oh God, to see all the beauty and the splendor of the world in which the unseen realm you exist. To begin to cooperate with you with our eyes open to the truth and the reality of that, oh God, which you are doing. Yes, to see that the earth is filled with your glory. The reality of that which is really going on is far bigger with you than are with them. Rather than to see the vileness and the lust and the demonic play and ruin of men. Raise up Ezekiel's, O God, who can see. Raise up men and women of the Spirit who have given themselves to only know that which you've spoken by your word, living by it, not allowing the entrance of any other thought, not allowing the communion with any other thing, only the fellowship of your blood and of your body, of your life and of your divine existence in us. Lord, truly, he that eats your flesh and drinks your blood dwells in you, in you and them. Thank you for such fellowship. Thank you, Father, for such, such fellowship. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Papa. We shall do exploits. Yes. It's wonderful to be healed, amen. amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Jeez. Great boldness in the faith. 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 I tear off of you every afflicting, tormenting thing that would try to harass your mind. Tear it off of you. You know, you think about it. Think about it. P.C. Nelson, the man who organized the entirety of the Assemblies of God movement in the early 1916, 1917, 1918, he organized the Assemblies of God movement, when the Assemblies of God was the Assemblies of God, moving the power of the Holy Ghost. He watched Alexander Dowie walk up to a woman who had a tumor on the side of her head that was as big as her head. And the thing had grown into her mouth and was starting to choke her. He walked up and he just peeled it off of her. And immediately there was fresh, brand new skin where he peeled it off, he peeled it off. No resistance, he peeled it off. Men pressed beyond the barriers and limitations of human existence. They pressed beyond the barriers of the doubt and the unbelief that demonic powers would try to impose upon them. God is the same God today. His power is just as available. The exploits of God are just as real. There's got to be a people that are consecrated to him. Yes. Father wants to redefine you. He wants you to redefine yourself by believing the definition that he gave <laughs> when he revealed the Logos. The word, the definition, the proclamation, the declaration. Christ Jesus. Did anybody find that scripture I wanted to read in Second Corinthians, chapter eight? Anybody find that? One God, one God, one God and Father. Huh? No one found it? Word of knowledge wasn't working. And he goes, no. 
Touch hands with him. Jesus is touching and bless you. And bless you. He just wants to bless you so much. It's easy to begin to move in God if you just let him bless you. You know that? Yes. It's hard to move in God if you're not blessed. You know what? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Are you blessed? Yeah. You're either blessed or you're cursed. Yeah. Somebody said, I was cursed. I said, that's no problem. We you at your remedy right here. We're going to bless you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. Well, let's just let him bless you. Let him bless you. He hath made me glad. He hath made me glad. I will rejoice for he hath made me glad. The church sang that for years and then on the sovereign moving of the power of God began to move and joy and excitement started taking place and everybody was saying, what's happening now? Well, you've been singing and praying, crying out for it. Come here. He hath made me glad. He hath made me glad. Hallelujah. Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus. Cast all your cares upon the Lord because He cares for you. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. Guess what's going to happen to you? You don't get exalted. He shall exalt you. Where did my wife go? <laughs> <laughs> the world and its cares are a death trap. Pursue the things of the kingdom. Pursue the things of the kingdom. Pursue them. Above all things, pursue. Above all things, pursue. The things of the kingdom and of his righteousness. Above all things. Thank you, Jesus. Come. Come, little preacher man. Come stand by your dad, your mom, brother. Now I'm break this old yoke off of you. Now in Jesus' name, break this old oppression thing off of you. Now I was commanded to be strengthened by the Spirit. <laughs> in your inner person, hallelujah, in your inner being, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Right out of your belly flows. Rivers of the Holy Ghost. Rasona e Ferrekina Moshe Kinga. E Pole Maya Shepo Yutifra. Yeah. Namanda Eshaya. 
Daisy all Sunday night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know that he's always so shady. <laughs> See how tired of you all so you day. He's he's your Sunday night. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I love how the Holy Ghost prays for a person. He does a great job. I agree with everything. <laughs> As he makes intercession for us. According to the mind of the Father. Oh, Masitia. Yeah. Father, we thank you that you bring it to pass. You know, the, it's the pleading, it's the pleadings of the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Son, the Spirit of the Father, pleading that someone will allow the anointing that Father has given to be fully manifested and revealed, to not allow it to be stopped, to not allow it to be hindered, to not allow it to be quenched, this fire that He's given. Think about the pleadings of the Spirit of the Lord, the intercessions of Christ Jesus. Whoever lives to make intercession for the saints, God's so desperate about what we pray little for. God's so desperate about His glory and the manifestation of His power being fully revealed through our lives. He's so desperate. The Holy Ghost pleads through us. Oh, let him live. Oh, let him be revealed. Oh, stand up and be strong. Let not this fire be put out. Let not this light be quenched. Let not this glory be put out or done away with. Stand fast. Stand fast. Stand fast. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ has made you free. I'm going to see that. Yeah. 
Tiana Makoya Namasai Tiana Makai Tiana there's really very little left for you to do but to believe there's really very little left for you to do but to receive for the Lord is the author of the work and the finisher of the same so find yourself in this rest which he gives Ah, Sidon, the Damali Piki, and the delight in the Sitorone, and delight yourself in God, and delight yourself in His glory. Hallelujah. Don't come under the pressure. People come under the pressure of stuff, they kill themselves. I'm not kidding you. I know. You come under the pressure of it, and they kill themselves. You're supposed to have fun. You're supposed to be having fun. You're supposed to be enjoying yourself. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Morisana melia to Rusika. Hale momane minea manepa obote ishe roshi kushta ishi. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Where's Lawrence at? Lawrence, come here. Come over here. And stand over here somewhere. Thank you, Jesus. Come here. Are you happy? <laughs> Are you ready for the glory and power of God to be man manifested in your life? It's going to freak you out. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> uh, 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 get ready. Get ready. Prepare yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Prepare yourself because God's going to come and be made manifest and revealed to you live. This is such extraordinary signs and wonders and miracles. Get ready. Hallelujah. Josh Matos. Josh Matos. Come here. You know, the Lord doesn't want us to do any thinking for him. <laughs> He's pretty got it all. He's pretty well got it all thought through. All you need is just obey him. Okay, just obey him. He's got it all worked out. Okay? Yes, sir. Okay, good. Yes, sir. I think everybody can profit from that. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah.
Well, praise God. You. Hold on, on son. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. God is holy, and he made me holy. God is righteous, and he made me righteous. God is almighty, and I worship him alone, alone. I and he's in me i'm in him and he commanded me to be oh god is holy and he made me holy god is righteous and he made me righteous god is almighty and i worship him Alone, alone, I'm in Him, and He's in me. I'm in Him, He commanded me to be. I'm in Jesus, in me. God is holy, he made me holy. God is righteous, he made me righteous. God is almighty, I worship him. Lord, hello. Come here, sister. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the working of your mighty power. We thank you, Father, for your glory. <laughs> thank you for my sweet little darling here, Lord Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Well, worship the Lord. Worship the Lord with your giving. Worship the Lord with your tithes and offerings because Father wants to make a mir work a miracle for you. And he works a miracle just by simple obedience. Huh? Hmm? Say the greatest miracles of faith. That's right. Takes place by the smallest acts of obedience. Mm. Amen. Obedience. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The fear. The fear that has limited many of your, your lives has held you back from doing the work of the ministry and living the life of Jesus. The human awkwardness and intimidation. Come soon in tonight in the name of Jesus Christ and you begin to walk in the boldness of the Spirit of the living God. Where you're in charge and you don't speak like a scribe. You're going to speak like a doctor of the law, religious Pharisee, but with, as a person with authority, as a son, as a daughter of the Most High. 
We begin to talk to people and say, listen, I've come here to tell you the most important thing that you have got to understand and you have got to know. God gives you, will give you a word from heaven to just express to people the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the life of Jesus Christ that has been made possible through God's love that he afforded to each man. Father, I'll fill your mouth with this word so you can declare the power of the resurrection, the power of the life of Jesus. Just step out, little acts of obedience. Say little acts of obedience. Results in the greatest miracles of faith. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Say, Lord Jesus. Say, Lord. Lord. Jesus. Thank you for the miracle. 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 Yes, miracle. Hallelujah. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Praise God. Just thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Come over here, men. Men and brethren, come here. Come here. Jude, you too. Josiah, Jacob, Jude, the train is towards heaven. The train is towards heaven, Jude. Amen. Father, thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the anointing on your servants. Yeah. Thank you for great signs and wonders and miracles. Yeah. Yes. Our oh God, right there. Thank you, Jesus. We're looking for a little place to land. <laughs> Father, I thank you for the great anointing and gifting that you've made available to this family. Yeah. Nothing gets in the way. Nothing gets in the way. Come under the rod. Come under the rule. Huh? Of the word. Amen? The word, the living word, will come and rule with a rod of iron. Amen? Hallelujah. Fall on the rock and be broken or I smash you. You hear me? Quite a message, isn't it? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Lord, we love your presence. Father, we love your signs and your wonders and miracles, and we thank you, Lord, that by your might and by your power and by the working of your Holy Ghost in the midst of us, we'll see a great shaking in this city again, even as you've done it before in the past. Lord, even as you gathered together the masses and the thousands over on Harbor in Rosecrans, 
for more than four years. From 1996 to the year 2000. Oh God, we know that you're going to do it again. But with greater exploits and signs and wonders for the lost this time. And Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that each one of your people will be strong in faith. Ha, ha, ha. And begin to give themselves to the work of the ministry no matter how much they are opposed or resisted. Ha. Huh. But Father, they'll give themselves all the more to declaring this word of faith, this gospel of salvation, in Jesus' name. Do it. Do it. Tomorrow, the Lord's going to give some of you an opportunity to cast out devils. Just go for it. Have a good time. Amen. Don't get all stressed out wrestling with the thing. Just do what God's given you the power to do. Command the thing to go in Jesus' name. Tormenting, lying things. Father's going to give you the opportunity to lay hands on the sick tomorrow. Papa's going to give you the opportunity to lead someone into the wonderful realms of heaven. Father's going to give you the opportunity to sow seed. You know, I've thought, Lord, it's a bit of a waste. They're just hard ground. I was sitting on an airplane one night and I was, you know, finishing up writing the book that, that's getting ready to be published by Charisma. And I had a timeline and trying to get things done. And the Lord said, talk to this girl sitting beside you. I said, Lord, she doesn't want to hear. She's a new age person. She's in an occult. She doesn't care nothing about you. And I went to the the Lord said, I said, tell her. I told you to talk to her. I told you, told you to tell her that she needs me. I said, Baba, she doesn't want to listen to the thing I got to say. And I went and typed away. And the Lord said, I told you to tell her she needs me. And I told the Lord again, no. And then the anointing shut down. I had nothing to type. <laughs> I said, she doesn't want to hear. And Anne's trying to sleep. She was right between me and the girl. It's proper. So I got up to go to the restroom. <laughs> and the Lord said, I told you to tell her she needs me. I said, okay. Yes, sir. If you'll just listen, he'll speak to you. If you're just wanting, I just want. Most of the time, I'm not so honorary. I so want to minister to people. I was busy. I, Anne was tired, trying to sleep. I was busy. Father's got other things to do. He doesn't want me to be busy. I told the girl, I said, you need Jesus. She said, no, I don't. I said, yes, you do. She said, I don't. And she said, what did she say, baby? She like, said some weird thing she had going on, right? She believes in all the truth. You believe in all the truth. Yeah, except for Jesus. I said, that is very interesting. <laughs> you believe in all the truth, except for Jesus. I said, isn't that strange to you? <laughs> then I, I started pulling out of her, you know, what she all she believed. And I just told her the history of it. She's looking at me all cross-eyed. She said, well, I'm not, I might not know where it came from, but I believe in it. I looked at her one more time because father told me about six or seven times to tell her. So I told her about six or seven times. <laughs> I obeyed every command. <laughs> and I think, Lord, what's the use to sowing your seed upon wayside hard ground? He doesn't want us making any judgments about it. He wants us to sow indiscriminately. It ain't a waste to him. You think, well, no, we're just going to sow this precious seed in good ground. No, he said, wayside, stony ground. The people that are going to reject, the people that are going to refuse, the people that are going to persecute you, the people that are going to hate you, the people that aren't going to like you for it. So, so if you do these things, I'm going to tell you right now, if you do these things, oh, if you begin to do these things, just leave, leave, leave your lunch break and go so. Get off work early. Call in well and go so. 
Amen. Has, does everybody in your workplace, everyone in your workplace, know where you stand? And have you talked to them about their soul? Have you told them that God commands them to repent? You know, it's a powerful message. It's the message of Jesus Christ. It's your go-to. If you can't think of anything to say, speak the word. And then when you can think of something to say, go ahead and speak the word. Just do it. Watch what God will do. You will be amazed. I know that many of you give yourself to going and sowing precious seed. But I want you to know, Papa said, you shall doubtless come again rejoicing, bringing the sheaves with you. Begin to enter in to what Father is doing. Father's calling forth the great harvest. Father's calling forth a great outpouring of His Spirit, which He will do through you and I. He won't do it apart from us. I'm going to tell you, I believe in a continuous move of the Spirit, but there are also sovereign movings of God. And we are about to step into a wonderful, sovereign moving of the early and the latter rain. Hosea 6, 4 said, And when He comes unto us as the early and the latter rain, We'll understand those who pursue God. Amen. I love every one of you so much. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. What a fellow. What a joy divine.